Museum of History Studios, high atop Baltimore Street, in a maximum security facility complete with central air. It's AG Today. Hi, this is Matthew Leach. I played First Sergeant Talbot in Band of Brothers. Hi, this is licensed battlefield guide Paul Bailey. Hi, I'm Dale Fetzer. Hi, I'm John Rothman. Hi, this is Bo Brinkman. Hi, this is Anthony Bordner. I'm a huge fan of Addressing Gettysburg. It is the greatest and most quality podcast ever. And you're listening to it right now. God, you're, God, you're so lucky. <laughs> Don't ever go in America, got talent. You won't make it. Did you say that? Never fight a pill, me boys. Never fight a pill. Ooh. Don't give them Third fuel. Battalion. Third Marine Infantry Regiment. I can house that low. You're listening to oh, wow. Addressing Gettysburg, Gettysburg today. Take him from the rear. Oh, man. <laughs> so, are you, aren't you glad I'm back? I bet, they're, I bet they're all Marines, though. Did you say Abe Lincoln? New York, <laughs> unique New York. <laughs> What's that, Colby? Five ish Finkel? What did you say? Sphincter Dingle. Oh, I'm sorry. I have Jim Morrison singing in the background there. What'd you say, Colby? I'm sorry. I was practically making up words. I just wanted to join in. It looked like fun. It was fun. <laughs> it, it was, was fun. a lot of fun. We had That's how we warm up, and we forgot to do it before the show, because it is a, a beyond a full house here. It John is. Stamos would be jealous. Yes. Uh, we've got, uh, <laughs> we've got what, f- uh, four, five, six people in the peanut gallery, I believe. Wow. And we've got uh, We're Colby. We're so popular. Mm-hmm. And we've got Colby here, um, and there's everybody. Look at Al. There's everybody oh, waving with our new camera angle. Uh, who's that over uh, against the wall there? P- bump in so people can see you to the by the closet. There we go. <laughs> 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 Hi, very guys. nice. That's very nice. And um, let's see. Well, let's see. Go go back to that, Colby. Let's say hi to everybody while we're there. Let's have everybody uh, wave and just yell out their name, like in romper room, kind of, but not really. Uh, we'll start over uh, by Debbie. Well, Debbie, everybody knows you. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Okay. And then who do we have after Debbie? Hi, I'm Jeff. Jeff. And then who's after Jeff? <laughs> what? Cindy. Okay. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> or Fraser, <baby. laughs> And then who's that next to Cindy? Questions. That's right. Six questions, <laughs> Lens. And this uh, first time here um, uh, in the peanut gallery, who's this guy? John B. John B., ladies and gentlemen, in the comment section. John B., you know him. You love his wonderful jokes. His one-liner. It's his first day here as my secret writer. And uh, <laughs> and then who's that next to the water cooler? Kate. Huh? Kate. Kate. Hello, Kate. And then who's that handsome fella in front of the monitors? The That's side of Colby's Colby. face. <laughs> and his really bright green so band-aid. Well, I, where, I can't see anybody. Where's Cindy? Oh, Cindy, say hi. Over. Say hi. Okay. There, there's Cindy's hand, everybody. Yeah, we have okay. her in time out in the corner. I thought right she now. might have stepped out because I didn't see her there. But okay, yeah. I, I, I got to work on that angle better. But all right. Anyway, so we've got uh, people here in the studio. And uh, what a wonderful... What a wonderful world it is! There's so many, so many uh, things uh, to talk about today. A lot of stuff to do. Now, so, yeah. this is all alleged, by the way. Mm-hmm. Allegedly, Bo Brinkman and Chris Webb from the Gettysburg Film Commission are coming in to talk about Cinema Under the Stars. Uh, mm-hmm. They're uh, they're very uh, successful uh, movie under the sky, as I like to call it. But uh, they call it Cinema Under the Stars, <laughs> and uh, it's at the seminary. Movie, movie Outside. under the sky. Movie outside. Dude, you want to go to movie under the sky tonight? <laughs> Maybe we'll see Bo Brinkman. Movie al fresco. <laughs> yeah. Movie al dente. You want to go to movie al dente? <laughs> I don't know. Who's al dente? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, he, he uh, they're going to come in and talk about... Uh, I need to take this off, but you uh, can't 
I know. Take the camera over to me. Pretend. Well, it's. <laughs> I hate you so in, much. In my defense, it was already there. It was it not. Was, it, it, it was, was not. <laughs> you started moving. Do you want? Do you want? Do, would you feel better if I also so oh, people could see my man boobs and no. and belly? No. You sure? That's fine. Show us that chest. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Look at the, him. He's so excited. The number. <laughs> The number of chocolate bars and hamburgers that I had to eat for this body, it was a lot. And it was a lot of sacrifice on my part. So I'm just going to let it rock. Same with uh, this. I've been doing oh a little work now. Oh, my God, everybody feast their eyes. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you, a, a week of carnivore and sit-ups does a wonders. <laughs> What are you left? Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I love oh, you so much. Show everybody up there. You oh, are, yeah. You are oh. not right in the head. I love you so much. It's because he worked out with me. Oh right. my god. One week days, working we, out we with did, Colby. We did that in two days. <laughs> One week of carnivore, two days of sit ups, and some bench presses with Colby. <sighs> And you get, here, you get to look like this. You get to look like this. You can look like this. I know. Look, this is the way you could look. <laughs> it has a belly button. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's got a belly button and a treasure trail. <laughs> 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 the best one, the shirt ring. The shirt ring. No, that's because I'm old. My skin's getting wrinkled. <laughs> the least they could have done oh. was not put a collar on the I, shirt. Well, I know. it's made in China. What do you expect? Oh, it's I don't cheap. Know. But is I'll there... tell you, it's very comfortable. It's Feel how soft it is. No. <laughs> I'm not having you. It's very silky have... smooth. Feel it. No, I'll feel it when the all cameras right, are right. on. Okay. Can we? <laughs> is there a hair tie back there? <sighs> I need a rubber band or a hair tie. It's hot in here. Is there a fan? Well, yeah. It's hot in here. Muscles. I know. <laughs> you just, you just waving muscles all on your face. I mean, how are you supposed to take that? <laughs> That was one of the best moments because I was really scared there for a moment. I was uh, like, oh, Matt, you don't have a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> you thought, I did. And I was like, oh, my God, Matt. <laughs> I'm so flattered. Oh, that Bells scared me. Ring, Although, me I'm not going to lie. There's a bell in In this light, because of the way that shines, it kind of looks like sunburn. <laughs> The way it's well, I highlighted like that. Well, I haven't like given that. you the full Monty, you know. It's oh, it has nipples. Oh, of course it does. It's anatomically correct. Oh, my Not to my that. anatomy, but it's... <laughs> uh, anatomically... There we go. We got Cindy with a hair oh tie. God, I love you. Thank Someone you. get her an ice pack. <laughs> it is It is hot in here, though. It is. We might have to open a window. We can't. They're sealed. <laughs> I t- How many times do I have to tell you? We're in a, we're in a, a maximum security facility <gasps> up here. Okay. Wow. Arms okay. under the table. So, okay. <laughs> that was very good, Matt. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much you for that. Much. You're I'm so. Glad you enjoyed it's it. like I. It's like I did that on purpose, but I swear to God, I didn't know about that shirt. I know. Well, that's what. It was so perfect. I was going to save it for the news, but I was like, oh, Beth is disrobing. I have to do it now. Like I have to go. Yeah, you're right. It's too oh, hot. Like you, you gave it me was wonderful. The perfect. Uh, good timing, sir. Yeah. Um, <sighs> I'll tell you something. She's it was, de- it was, off, it was depressing when I uh, when I put that on down in the bathroom and I saw myself in the mirror and I'm like, man, if you had just only worked at it, you Matt. could have looked like that. Here's the thing. You're adorable. Shut up. Well, I know. Okay. Uh, okay. So what else did I want to tell you? Oh, okay. I got some video to show you. And now that we have this wonderful new feature, I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to show it to you. There's two things uh, I want to show you. Thank you, James D. Says Matt is a sexy beast. Grant says Matt is an Adonis. <laughs> I didn't know Matt was one of the Spartan soldiers in the movie 300. <laughs> oh, man. The things I could tell you about that. Oh, uh, McNair says, where can I buy one of those? <laughs> I, you, you have to work at it, McNair. You know, I mean, I didn't buy anything. I mean, I paid Colby a little bit, you know, but uh, no. McNair. McNair. All right, so I'm going to get this uh, video up here now. Uh, I want to show you first. I'm very proud of my nephew. Uh, he um, he has done something that nobody uh, with my uh, DNA blood, yes, with my DNA, 
coursing through their veins has ever done. <laughs> and uh, that is he scored a touchdown. So here we go. He's a 13 years old. He's number 13. You'll see him. He's the one scoring the touchdown. And here we go. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh! Joey! Go, Joey! Go, Joey! Yeah! He even looks back. Yeah, look at him. He's saying, yeah, I, I got this. Yeah! All right. Very good, Jojo. Oh, he's so happy. He's very happy. Oh, look at him. Way to go, Joe. Just like your favorite uncle. Scoring touchdowns. All right, I never, they said about you I, never I never scored a touchdown. There goes Matt. He scores touchdowns. <laughs> yeah. Now, this other thing I want to show you. Let me find this now. Where did I put it? Okay. Okay, so we went looking uh, at, a, at a property today. Now, this is not to live in. This is a, a separate uh, situation, a business venture. But okay. now I, it's a tricky thing I have to do here because uh, Chris Morano was with me and I had to... Uh, I have to bleep him because he he uses some language here, but you'll understand why when you see what we were watching. We're out at this house, and you know it's out in the country, beautiful, quiet. It's the beautiful, best place you've ever seen. No better place than what we were looking at. <laughs> and um, we hear this plane, airplane. You know, oh, no, you know, and we're like, what the. And we go and look up, and this is what we were watching. Are you ready? Because here we go. Oh, this guy. Yeah. I hear him at my house, too. He's going to do the free fall. Here we go. There he goes. Oh, my God. He is out of his tits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you missed that, that one. How is he not like vomiting? How is he not throwing oh, up? He's just How do we not see like streams? Stall it out. <laughs> oh uh, no, it's Matt! How he just stays there in the air like that? Like the hang time thing. Where yeah. He goes and he, like it's a helicopter. It's, it's a stall. It's definitely an exercise. So. Oh. Oh. oh, I missed you that one. You are really bad at this. Sorry, because you keep talking through it. I can't you throw me off. Sorry. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. He's just hanging there. Got to clean my lens. Oh, my. Uh, uh. Oh, now it. Oh, he's. Oh, my oh. God. I guess if you've got the balls and the skill, that must be exhilarating. Okay, there you go. That's ter- I so, hear that guy all the time at my house. Yeah, so I've always heard him around here, but I thought it was, and I think I think what I, I am it was hearing. A drone? No, 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 no. I think what I am normally hearing are like flight lessons from the airport where they do teach oh. you how to take care of all that, you know, stall yeah. and then turn it on and pull, uh-huh. pull out, but not all that loop de loo stuff. That was crazy. That guy was something else. I would like to meet who that guy was. I would, I have to interview him. Yeah. That's fascinating. I couldn't do that. And I know he lived through it, but I kept thinking, oh my God, he's going to die right now. <laughs> yeah. We're watching it on film. Yeah. Uh. No, James D you. says, I wish I could smash the like button 50 times for Matt's abs. That's pretty good. Thank you. All right. So uh, what else did I want to tell you here? Beth had a dream about Colby. Tell me about this. I did have a dream about Colby. All right. So let's see. What did you do here? Colby, are you, uh, what are you, what are your thoughts here knowing that Bethany had a dream about you? Uh, just to, uh, uh, you know, uh, initially. Uh, I feel like I'm kind of on the edge of my seat a little bit. Okay. You know, like, uh, I just don't know what's going to come. I, do I need to be on my, do I need to be on well, the car? Well, that's. I, Let's see. Let's see, right? Okay. So, you know how you have those dreams where you're in school? Right. And you, maybe I'm the only one that has this, where you lost your schedule 
or you realize that you've been going to class for a whole year and you never went to the math class. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what was happening. I was okay. having that kind of a dream and I had realized I never went to math class the entire year. And so I'm sitting in math class, which is of course the one class that you can't like pull it out at the last minute and like fake your way to at least a D. Correct. Right. It's like, you have to be there all year long. Yeah. And my school is always in a mall for some reason with right. lots of escalators and I can't find the classroom. And it's a thing. So I'm sitting in the math class and I'm like, oh my God, this is the first class I've ever been to for this entire year. And there's a test tomorrow and I don't know what to do. And suddenly Colby's voice comes in and it's like he's narrating my life and my thoughts and my feelings uh-huh. in the dream. And he's like, suddenly Bethany finds that she's in math class and doesn't know what she's going to do. Let's watch. <laughs> and then it would like pan to this. So he's like Rod, uh, yeah, Rod he's Sterling. He's like narrating my dream yeah. for me. Which was kind of terrifying. And then it wasn't I, pleasant. Well, you were also knew my thoughts, which was terrifying. I always know terif- your thoughts. Oh, that's true. But then but then that laugh would come in every once in a while <laughs> okay. when I did something stupid. I was like I'm I remember in the dream being lost on an escalator because I couldn't find my class and all of a sudden Colby's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> like, ah! <laughs> 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 So, yeah, it wasn't a fun dream, Colby. Oh, Colby, I'm so like, sorry. I could be like a villain or something in, in, a, in a show about you, you know? Like I'm the, you I'm, could be. I'm like the, I'm like the, uh, the guy that's the, uh, the ominous foreshadowing. What was the, what was in Inspector Gadget? You never saw his face. Oh, uh, it was, uh, it was like. The Claw, Mr. Claw. Mr. Claw or something like that. It was his, um, Charlie or Boz, no. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie's Angels, and then Bosley was the guy that we saw, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm talking about. Huh? I'm talking I know. about Inspector. Gag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, but it was his version of that. Uh, okay. Um, I can't remember what he was called. Yeah. Yeah. But he was the bad guy, and you never saw him, and that that's kind of what it was like. <laughs> Just my <laughs> because, voice haunting. Because you. truthfully, <laughs> look at what I see from this chair. All I see is the top of <laughs> oh, his oh, he's, hat. He's Wilson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Wilson. Yeah. Here, Colby, uh, go to uh, camera three, and I'll uh, do something I promised myself I would never do, but I'm going to turn... Oh, here, I could just do it like this. Um, camera three. So there, Col- so there's yeah, Colby. that's all I see. That's all we ever see hat. is Colby's... <laughs> hey, neighbor. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so it's very... <laughs> This is my life. And then Colby gives me uh, words of wisdom that I come back to Cindy and try to repeat, but I jumble it up. Well, that was the funniest thing about that show was when Tim would go back to his wife trying to get out of trouble and then he would jumble up the advice and the wise words that uh, Wilson gave him. You remember I that? remember you remember? watching the show and being thinking it was funny, but I don't remember a single plot line. Oh, that's what was so funny about, about it. The actual show, except that whenever Al came in, people laughed. Yeah. Oh, Al Borland was great. Yeah. Yeah. Also, the uh, the assistant always got some cheers, too, from what I remember. Oh, yeah. Pam she Anderson. Was, yeah. And then the uh, the other one, yeah. Uh, and the other one. And the other one. And uh, this is uh, horrifying news, but uh, everything turned out okay, uh, supposedly. Uh, but our, our dear friend uh, Debbie uh, took it in the rear there, uh, apparently. Take him from the rear. She, uh, she got rear-ended. <laughs> In her car. Debbie, tell us about that. <laughs> oh, she's not in here. <laughs> she's not in oh, here. Oh, she's not there. No. She went to answer the door. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like turning around and looking, and she's just not in here. <laughs> the doorbell rang. That's her one, it's her one chance to get on the show for today. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe she'll tell us later during, during the, news, the news. Okay. Uh, that'll be what we do there. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think that's about all I wanted to tell you. There. Oh, you know what? I, let me do this here because we've got such a, a big show for you later on. There, uh, There's a letter here from a listener. Kathy Hoffman is her name. I believe it's Kathy. Yeah, that's it. yeah Kathy Hoffman. Okay. I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but she asked a question. She says, first is a question for you. Why did Confederate and Union generals and soldiers pose for pictures with their hand inside their uniforms? So I asked our dear friend uh, Gary Edelman. Uh, I said, Gar, I've heard two <laughs> yeah. things. I said, go, Gar, 
I go, I've heard two things. I heard it's to emulate Napoleon. Mm-hmm. That's I also I heard that the photographers just pose it that way because it's just good posture. It just looks good. It looks better than like your hands, yeah. your hands hanging down and everything. And, uh, and he, here, let me read the answer. I think my phone fell here. It is. If you'll excuse me. Ah, okay. So he said. <laughs> With the side peck. <laughs> oh, sorry. I don't mean to be immodest. Um, so Gary, Gary said, uh, I'm not sure if we will ever know when people like to argue about it, but uh, I think it is. He must have been doing talk, talk to text here. I think it is all about the Napoleonic pose. Just something that gentlemen or leaders did. Why? Because their only example before photography came around uh, were paintings and this famous painting spur, uh, a, spur to movement. Uh, I call Napoleon one of the earlier influencers of the visual medium. And um, he said, by the way, I feel strongly that the photographers did have something to do with it. And as much as they were now proprietors of the portrait more frequently than painters. So then I asked him, I said, do you think painters of Napoleon's day posed him and others that way because it looks good? And then it just caught on in the later generations and he said, good question. I have no opinion on that. So uh, I always heard it was because he had like fleas or. No, I always heard it was he had ulcers and he was because his stomach always hurt. But that's nonsense. That's silly nonsense. I can't believe you believed that. I don't We don't know is the answer. So who knows? It I could already, be. I heard he had a shriveled hand and he just always hid it from everybody. He had like a, a club hand or. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Kathy. Um. I, I can't get the sense that you're getting my replies. This is, I think, the second or third letter that she's written me since last year. And I do reply to you, Kathy, and I send them in the like, nice self-addressed stamp envelope that you uh, include here. So are you getting them, Kath? That's what I need to know. Are you getting them? She says she watches the show every Thursday. So uh, maybe she'll answer in the comment section or she'll uh, write me in uh, her next letter. But yeah, that's it, uh, Kathy, so that I hope you enjoy. Oh, 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 and I'm sorry. There's a message for you. I'm so sorry. At towards the end there, she says, um, where is it? Uh, she thanked me for this. So I, I thank you for that. And tell Bethany I said, <laughs> keep doing what you do. <laughs> no, she said, tell Bethany I said hello and keep doing what you do. You're really great. I really hope I can write back to you. Uh, you can write back to me uh, when you have the time to do so, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I'm wondering, oh, Kathy, if you've ever got my replies because – you always say that, and I do write, and I'm hoping you're getting them. So let me know, and we'll find out a way that uh, I can get them to you. This is great audio. <sighs> Sis, Start, boom, ba. <laughs> Name the sound a sheep makes right before it explodes. <laughs> People don't know how to laugh anymore. And that, old, that was, that's an old That was joke. a hilarious one. It was when Johnny did it. Yeah. It was still <laughs> you know? hilarious. All right, listen. Uh, let me give you a couple of listener emails because we're not going to have time later. I've said this before. Ethan Go Zeta says, hello. I heard of the AG podcast after listening to your interview on the Untold Civil War podcast in 2020. After or I've been listening since then on Spotify and don't want to miss any more of the episodes that are only on Patreon. I am not... Uh, extremely knowledgeable about the military history or uh, or the military or its history, but the guests on your podcast do a great job of delivering information that can be easily understood, especially the Ask a Guide episodes. I had not realized how fascinating and complex the Battle of Gettysburg was until addressing Gettysburg. Almost all of my knowledge about the Civil War slash Gettysburg has come from your podcast. Phil Salwasser, I hope I pronounced that right, says, love your show. Last spring, I attended an event in Gettysburg that was guided by LBG Rob Abbott, and he was fantastic. He is. I could listen to that dude read the phone book. Wanting to learn more, <laughs> I came across your episode with Rob about Confederate artillery leadership and really enjoyed it. I've been listening to the show damn near every day since. Uh, I don't know that I'll be one to use the perks of being a Patreon, but I want to support the show because it's brought such a quality of life for me over the last six months. My favorite episode so far is with Jim Pangburn. Meade takes command. Probably have gotten through it three or four times now. 
That's why it's uh, in the top five all the time. Uh, <laughs> thanks so much for great content. And um, I'll, I'll save these other two for next week because they're long. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very that's much very for sweet. those. Yes, that is. Thank you for the emails. And, you know, a lot of the patrons say, oh, I don't even listen to this stuff. I just do it because I want to support you. And I go, no, 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 no. You got to listen to this. The whole point is that you get something back. You know, a lot of podcasts all over the world have a Patreon account and maybe they do one or two things a month mm-hmm. if they get around to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I kind of, and I guess maybe I'm doing it the reverse where I, most of the stuff I put out is on Patreon every month and the free stuff is the least amount of stuff that we put out. And um, I don't know. I feel like if you're going to be paying something, you should be giving, given something in return. Mm-hmm. That's my, and then, but what, what better than, and then uh, furthering your education. So true. Right. With all the great guests that we have over there. Now, one of the things I've noticed in the last several uh, listener emails that you've read yeah. is that they all say something about it being like, a, you know, a part of their life. Like it has improved their quality of life is what that gentleman said. And yeah. that was very sweet. That's a wonderful compliment. It is a wonderful compliment. And um, I remember when we first started, Eric and I, um, actually the guy who did our logo and um, that runs the website, Mike Stretch came up to Eric and I on the battlefield and he gave us that picture that's right behind you there, which is not a painting. That's a photograph that he colored in in Photoshop. So he took a picture of the statue and colored in the flesh tones and the uniform and the gun and everything. And I thought that was so cool. And uh, uh, anyway, so we were talking and while we were talking, uh, he said, you know, you, you guys really, uh, uh, I, I can't remember if he said, you meant the world to me or you really saved my life during COVID. Mm-hmm. Either way. A couple people have said that. Oh, a lot of people do. But mm-hmm. because that's when uh, the audience really grew. And um, uh, <laughs> I remember Eric and I walking away uh, after we parted ways with Mike and, and we didn't say anything for a bit. And I go, does that shit make you feel uncomfortable? And he's like, absolutely. Oh, and I was well, like, Eric. I mean, I love. Yeah, but it made death. me feel uncomfortable. I was asking him because it made me feel uncomfortable, and uh, and I go, I think we might have to get used to that though. And he's like, Yeah, probably. <laughs> and I go, I don't. It doesn't make me feel good though. I, <laughs> and it's not because it makes me feel bad. It's just it's um, when your whole life, your inner monologue has been, "You suck. You're an ass." And then people are suddenly saying nice things to you. It's very hard to undo that. Mm-hmm. But now I revel in it and I go to the grocery store to be recognized. So it's, a, you know, it's totally flipped around. He actually hangs out in the ice cream section. Every time I've seen <laughs> him there, cold there, you're in the ice cream yeah. section. Yeah, well, because it makes these poke out. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm enjoying yeah, my fake body too, too much. much. Okay, <laughs> that's enough of that. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, is it dusty in here? <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong? We're that back. vein popped out I on know. your forehead again. All right, I saw that Bo uh, and Chris have arrived. Hey! So what we're going to do is we're going to open the door. Oh no! Uh, not wait. Well, not right oh. now. We're going to take a break real quick, oh. and uh, we're going to come back with. Uh, with Bo and Chris, uh, they're from the Gettysburg uh, Film Commission. We're going to talk about uh, Cinema Under the Stars. Really something that you should partake in if you're in the area. Um, there's two more left. Saturday and next month in October. We'll talk about those and more. Are you glad dial? We are too. We'll be right back. You interrupted me. <laughs> The Gettysburg Museum of History, located right here in the center of Gettysburg, PA. Owner and curator Eric Dorr grew up here and has spent his life collecting and preserving history through artifacts ranging from the Civil War, the Battle of Gettysburg, World War II, presidential items, pop culture, and more. His museum is free and open to visitors Wednesday through Sunday, 11 to 5 p.m., where you can stop by and immerse yourself in some of the most amazing artifacts that you would never believe exist in the middle of Gettysburg. If you're a fan of Band of Brothers and everything Easy Company, you'll love his exhibit featuring the Dick Winters collection and artifacts from D-Day. You can even own your own piece of history by buying one of the many relics they have for sale in the museum and on the website gettysburgmuseumofhistory.com. 
The Gettysburg Museum of History is a non-profit 501c3 organization with a foundation that allows all purchases and donations to keep the museum operating and open free of charge. They have been featured on the History Channel, the Travel Channel, the Smithsonian Channel, and the Science Channel. Now you can check them out on American Artifact, the series on the YouTube channel, The History Underground. So that's the Gettysburg Museum of History at 219 Baltimore Street or the Gettysburg Museum of History.com. So pull that right up to your mouth there. I think we're getting ready to All go. All right, we don't have a very long break, so have a seatbelt. Put your thing on. Just uh, say hello to me there, Chris, please. Hello, Matt. All right, very good. Let's make sure it's really right up there. Okay, we are. Oh, no. Oh, no. What's the button I hit? That one. All right. Wow. Gettysburg's first and premier podcast about living in and visiting Gettysburg has returned from that long commercial break. Thanks for sticking (laughs) around. Here's Matt. You know, the, the thing about this shirt is you don't lose the belly. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, going around like this, you can still see the big belly. But the way you have it and the angle you have it, you can't really tell. Uh, from there, but poor Bo got a side view. Uh, all right, Definitely. so Bo uh, Brinkman and uh, Chris Weber here from the uh, Gettysburg Film Commission. Hello, guys. Welcome. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Matt. Hello, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the uh, cinema under the stars has we been quite. You, scoot over there a little bit, oh. there, Chris, so you can get like kind of you can sit behind him because you're uh, you got the headphones and the microphone all in one there. I so you don't can, know what I have. Just put the stool behind Bo, and then you're in the shot there. Yeah, you see you see your shot there. Oh, okay. You so you get get over. So move like move it behind him. <laughs> there you go. I'm sitting here going. There you go. Okay. There you go. Yes, you got it. I know it's confusing to do. Okay. okay. I'm so it. sorry to the audience at home. I got it. I am so sorry. You need there to you snuggle. Go. Snuggle with the chair. So, <laughs> Cinema Under the Stars um, has been uh, quite a success. Uh, you've had um, probably a couple hundred people come through uh, for sure, right? I mean, what was the most that you've had uh, in one night? And, thousands. You, thousands. You got to point the mic to your mouth. Thousands. <laughs> okay, you don't have to yell once it's there. <laughs> uh, and so you've had thousands of people come, and um, the the seminary lawn can hold everybody, um, obviously. Yeah. But it's pretty cool though. You get a you got a huge inflatable screen, and you project the movie on it. And it th- have you done one yet? Uh, unfortunately, no, because they're always on the same days. I have events. Do you have one this weekend? Mm-hmm. Of course you do. Oh. Of course you do. Well, it is World War II weekend, yeah. and so it's, yeah. But at night, you have one? Well, yeah, I have to help with the cleanup of the stuff. Yeah. Set up and clean up, of course. Mm-hmm. Well, so, for those of you spectators who are just visiting and you don't have to do any of that stuff, there's no World War II events out at the Eisenhower at night, are there? Uh, n- no, but there's a lot of groups doing stuff. Like, there'll still be the living historians on site and things like that. So. So as things wind down, what better thing to do than go and enjoy a movie on the lawn? The weather's turning really beautiful. It's not hot and muggy. There's no bugs, you know, right? You sit out there, you mm-hmm. get some popcorn. Uh, is it BYOB or is yeah. there no boot? Yeah, it's BYOB. Okay. Yep. And free. <laughs> and it's free, which is which the is best great. part. <laughs> and the inflatable, just to, you know, like usually when people think an inflatable uh, screen, yeah. it's some 10 or 15 foot no, it's little huge. flimsy screen. This thing is ginormous. It is. And it takes four people to set it up. <laughs> it takes a couple of hours. Uh, and it's uh, it's it's 30 foot screen. Yeah. It weighs 400 pounds. It's yeah. huge. I saw pictures of it. It's it, uh, how do you think I got this body? I it's know. Been helping you set it up. <laughs> so, um, sunburn. That's how you got the sunburn. Well, that's how I got the yeah, sunburn. sunburn. Well, I like to work shirtless. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's enormous. And it really, it, it is very nice. The last one uh, was what? Uh, the Searchers, right? Yeah. And yeah. we watched that, uh, you and me and Jim. Yeah. Jim. Uden. Okay, good. Uden. So bad with names. It's nothing against him. I'm just bad with names. Isn't that right, Bertie? Yeah. And so uh, we, we got up and we talked a little bit about, I love, you know, I love movies, right? That's the other area of history that I love. And um, I'm very excited for October, which is going to be Psycho. And it was supposed <laughs> to be in August. Yeah. But. It got, was rained out. Right. And so what better movie to get rained out was than perfect. Psycho because it gets pushed to October. Yeah. Ugh. And it's going to be fan. Have you seen Psycho? Yeah. You don't like it? 
It's psychologically damaging to me. It is. It's hard to take a shower after that movie. It is. It's not the shower part. It's the part that you're being watched all the time. See, but that's one scene. It, but you know that he's doing it to other people. Oh, well, like that's true. In, you know, and he's, it's not. Yeah, nobody goes out there and he's always putting him in the same room and then he's peeking through the door. Yeah, through the Did uh, you ever hole. plug that hole in your bathroom? Not yet. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> Go straight Thanks for reminding closet. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Memo to self. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. So, uh, okay. What is Saturday's movie? It is uh, Sunset Street Boulevard. Street Cardinal, the name Desire? No. no Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. Okay, I keep is, getting it confused. One of my like, favorites. It's in the, one of the top three best movies ever made. We're talking William Holden, Jack yeah. Nicholson, Gloria Marlon Swanson. Brando, and Gloria Swanson, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Gloria Swanson, and uh, I just lost his name. William Holden. William Holden, thank you. Gosh, I've seen the movie a dozen times, but I've never been able to see it on the big screen. Mm. And that's what's so magic about this. Just like uh, the Searchers, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. seen it on TV a couple of times. I had no idea what a beautiful film it was. It, yes, and that's the thing about these old movies; they were shot for the screen because there was no like TV in the early days. There was no TV, no. so you're shooting it for this giant screen. Yeah, right, wide screen. Yeah, and nowadays I think they shoot it. Do, well, you tell me. Do they shoot a lot of movies now because they know it's going to end up on a TV on DVD or streaming? Well, some some people, some directors uh, shoot it wide, okay. wide screen. But you know, you have to know that it's ultimately going to be on a television, so it's going to be cropped down, cropped out. You know, but uh, actually, uh, Gettysburg was shoot, shot on a wide screen. Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's what Maxwell wanted. I had the uh, the DVD that had both versions, mm -hmm. and I always watch the widescreen. And version. you can tell there's a yeah. big difference. Huge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You miss so much of that action. That's oh, on the on the there. on the corners. Yeah, yeah. And the yeah. scenery. Yeah, the you scenery. know the whole thing, the whole yeah. nine yards. So it is. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Uh, now on the waterfront, what or no street? What is it? Sat <laughs> oh my gosh! What is? I can never Sunset remember that Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. It's, all, it's called Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Learning to cope. <clears throat> <laughs> it is. Um, what is it about? I've never seen it. You've, You've never seen it. I've never you seen can't. it. Oh. No, don't give it away. Just give me the premise. Okay. In the end, <laughs> <laughs> in the end, what? Oh, okay. I can. T I won't say the ending, but I'll tell you, the ending is at the beginning. Does it start at the end? Yes. And then it ends at the end. Yeah. It works as I love movies that start at the end and work their way yeah. out. Yeah. Willem, uh, Billy Wilder wrote and directed it. And oddly enough, it's it's one of my all-time favorite films. And my last place that I lived in L.A., my living room Sorry. looked down into the empty lot, which once was the mansion that they shot oh, wow. in 1950. Oh, cool. That's so cool. And they tore it down five years <laughs> after. And they tore it down in 1955 and built a monstrosity. But it's now a, about an acre parking lot behind this other building. But uh, I used to look down at it going, wow. Imagine, you know, because the building I was in was almost 100 years old. Yeah. So, you know, whoever was living there was watching them, looking out the window, watching yeah. all the things the going on, you know, because they were there for several months. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Chris, I'm sorry. This paper's in the way. I can't see Hi, your lovely Robert. face. Let me just I move over you. here. Hi, Matt. Hi. Um, do you... <laughs> I think he needs that. I, yeah, oh, no, 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 take it off. I don't care. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh God. All right. You just leave it, Bo. Leave it be. Good. It, it, what it's happened? It's right in front of you, too, if you wanted oh. to see what it is. Uh, so you are in charge of the uh, the film commission, and uh, you guys have been putting this on. And uh, what were your expectations of it? And has it... Don't touch the camera, Bo. Uh, I was trying to aim it back at you. <laughs> He's your friend. Oh, you got it. Okay. <laughs> okay. What were your expectations, and and has it uh, met them or exceeded them, or or what? Are you pleased with how it's turned out? Yeah, the yeah. expectation I you know initially thought of when we talked about it. Bo had the, you know, the vision, and all I kept thinking about was it would be so much fun to gather our community again on the ridge, to see friend, 
or someone and that's foe. a stranger. Yeah, friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to watch what? a movie with friend and foe. Friend and foe. That's who it. Who becomes a friend again? But um, there you go. Yeah, because you know it. It and it exceeded everything I was hoping for. The atmosphere of being outside on the ridge is amazing, just mm-hmm. because it's amazing. Yeah. And then um, going back to like sitting on a, a a blanket, a lawn chair having a drink beside you, going down and grabbing food, seeing people you haven't seen in a while, or actually we had the last time, you know, people dri- riding their bicycles by going, what are you doing here? Because the, you know, yeah. the screen was already up. Right, and right. Like these older gentlemen, they're like, what are you doing? We're like, What's oh, we're watching the, yeah, the searchers they... tonight. And they did. I love they the came searchers. Back. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I have to tell you, I walked around and greeted everybody that I could and to actually, the joy, the beauty, and the relaxation of being outside waiting. Yeah. The live music is amazing. So that's what I wanted to yeah. b- bring up next. So you got food and live music yeah. there. Rebecca Foster, I think, is going to be this yeah, weekend, right? She she's yeah. She's a friend of ours. She's been on the show a few times. Yeah. She's very, have you heard her before? Or did I you have, just? I've heard her before, um, but I have not met her yet. And she's great. Yeah. She's very good. Yeah. Um, so people will enjoy that. So mm-hmm. enjoy Rebecca Foster, and yeah. then you're going to get to see A Streetcar Named Desire. Right. And what? <laughs> Sunset Boulevard. Thank you. Thank you. Dear Thank Lord. you. I'm so They're sorry. They're not even remotely similar I've seen movies. neither of them, so I don't know really? how. Really? Whoa. Why would I see a musical? It's not. You know that. You're just kidding. <laughs> Is Streetcar the one where the guy's like, Stella? Yeah. Yeah, I only know that from The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> when Ned Flanders. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> that is terrible. Um, You've oh, never read the play? No. But more importantly, you never watched Marlon Brando do that role? Oh, no. man. No, yeah. I never watched that. I have, a, no. I have a funny story about that. Actually. All right, go ahead. So uh, I met this old... I, when I'm going to give you a streetcar you can't refuse. About Streetcar Named Desire. Yes. I, I was uh, at the actor studio, and I was a, I did a play reading of one of my show, plays, and she came up to me, and we started talking, and I said, yeah, I live a, you know, like right off a of ninth in the village. And she goes, well, I do too. I live right above uh, the Cherry Lane Theater. I said, oh, my all-time favorite theater in N- New York. And she's like, yeah, co- she was a grand old dame, and she's like, cocktails hours at five, you just show up. And, uh, you know, I'm like, really? And she goes, yeah, just knock on the door, it's fine. So I did one day. And uh, we had martinis, and we had so much fun. And she had all these pictures on the wall of actors and stuff, and and I didn't think anything about it. And so I came back several times, uh, you know, for cocktails, and we because we had so much fun. And one time I I went, I said, oh, I gotta use the restroom. She goes, just go back there, and, you know. I'm like, okay. And I'm taking a whiz, and I looked <laughs> on the back of the toilet is this statue. <laughs> No. And it says, Best Supporting Actress, Kim Hunter, 1954. What? And I'm like, that's what I said. Why is it it on the toilet? (sighs) That's her kind of fun thing. Okay. And so I walked out with it into the living room, and I said, Kim, is this real? And she goes, well, I hope after all these years, uh, yes, (laughs) I hope it's real, but who knows? (laughs) And I said... Oh my God! I just figured out who you were. You're, you're Kim Hunter, the Kim Hunter. Yeah. You know. Uh, oh my God. From Streetcar Named Desire. The, the play and the movie. Mm-hmm. Wow. Bonfire. Yeah. Of yeah. the vanities. Um. So I don't know who that is, Kim Hunter. So you had martinis with Kim Hunter is the point though. And when no. we see Streetcar on no, just Saturday, a funny story. <laughs> we are not. And she's been dead for a long Saturday. time. <laughs> when you see Streetcar, you look up on the on the screen there, and you look over at Bo, and you're like, "Wow, he had martinis with her and peed on her statue." <laughs> Mind you, it's not going to happen this Saturday, <laughs> right? <laughs> Maybe next. Maybe year. next year we yeah. could watch Maybe Streetcar Named year. Desire. Maybe next yeah. year. It's so, pretty dark. It's a pretty dark. It is. It's a pretty dark. Uh, 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 Movie. Well, we so you're watching Psycho. Yeah. Psycho. No, that's a walk oh, in the park. Just fun. Yeah, that's a that's a kids movie. It's fun. Right. Fun yeah. movie. What? So <laughs> every year, uh, like, is there going to be a theme to the movies every year? Like this year, um, it seems to be you know like classics, like top films from the top 100, let's say of yeah. all time or whatever. Um, are we? Are you thinking like themes next year or, or every year or like? 
you know, like the the, the movies of uh, well, of uh, Steven Spielberg. Well, you or, know what? You know what? I had a, an idea to do that would be fun. Is uh, and I was going to mention something to do uh, to bring Jack Busey out and let him introduce uh, Starship Troopers. Starship Troopers. That would be cool. Yeah, oh, that would be that would oh be God, really cool. And I talked die. to him about it. He, uh, you know, about six months ago, and he said, "Oh, I'd love to do that." You know. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, well, yeah, and actually, I'd like to add a little something. He and I have not talked much about that yet, but. We're working on the dates right now. We're going to secure them within a month for next year. And I would love insight. Like, I would love to know what do people want to see? You know, I think it would be very cool. Now, Matt, I've, oh, yeah. we have done it, and you're so good Street at it. Street car You're design. good at it. Yeah, because you keep saying it. So we might. But anyway, I think it would be very Sunset cool. Sunset Boulevard. Cool. Yeah. No, we're no. going to show that on Saturday. But, oh, that's what we're watching. Oh, see, now I can't even do the joke anymore. Oh, my God. All right, go ahead. Catch I'm up. sorry. I'm sorry Catch to interrupt up. you. Yeah, no. I think it would be really cool <laughs> to hear what people are looking for, and then we can create um, all kinds of uh, ways of showing the filming. Oh, God. I have a book. No, no, no. I'm looking to see if people are commenting. Uh, Yeah. I have a book that is 501 movies to see before you die. Mm -hmm. And it's like all the movie, like from the whole era of it. It's actually really cool. Yeah. Um, I've seen like three of them. (laughs) That's so you, so you need to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be really cool to see what people's desire is and then and have fun with it then. Seven Samurai would be a good one to do. Mm. That's a total classic. Mm-hmm. That's uh, uh you, uh, you But uh, I don't know about I don't know how that would please the Gettysburg sub, crowd. Subtitled. Oh, I can't I can't do that. I don't know if you subtitled. could do that on that big screen in the dark. Very well. So, oh no! This like it comes in movie? clear. It comes oh, okay. in very it's, clear. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not like the ones you get for your backyard. What about, no. yeah. what about yeah. Aliens? The second one. No, no. There's children. Dude, that's a great movie. There's though. children. That is a great movie. That's terrible. Michael Boogie King? Nights. How about Boogie Nights? <laughs> <laughs> I think we could. Yeah. If we can watch Psycho. What about Terminator One? Terminator. How How about the, uh, Die Hard? Estella says, I would watch Psycho instead of having to look at Matt's abs. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Uh, Eric Houston says, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I like that. Peter Zach, Peter Zach says, True Romance. I don't think that's... Uh, Tombstone that, would be good, though. Tombstone would be good. Tombstone. I, I like True Romance. Yeah, yeah, but do you I think really that's do, like... But like what's it's true a bit, there's certain, like So here's yeah, the thing. You know, you gotta, first of all, we're, off the, we're on God's land, number yeah, one, right? Yeah. Number two... Uh, there's, it's in a neighborhood. Yeah. Right. So you got to kind of be a little careful, right? Don't yeah. you? Or do you not? Do you? Poor do you, Jamie. Uh, no. And uh, she walks up and watches them. I hey, I, I'm telling you, you can see it from the corner. You can see it, hear it clearly. I can walk out in the, in the, the four stop signs there uh-huh. and I can see and it's called hear an intersection. very clearly in the intersection. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Where the four stop signs are. Yeah. Is it a four way? It's, it is a four way. <laughs> oh <is>. my! <laughs> so, <laughs> moving and there's on. There's a three way too. So yeah, there is. There's one of those as well. But uh, seriously, Bo, uh, I think uh, you should. Uh, well, my, I would say what you do is every year you have a theme, right? Mm-hmm. Every year, it's World War II movies, westerns. Uh, this year, it just seemed to be like you know classics, kind of like an introduction to mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, you could do uh, like uh, John Hughes films. Is it John Hughes or yeah, yeah, John okay. Hughes, yeah. Uh, you know, you could do Breakfast Club. Uh, yeah, right, that guy mm-hmm. uh, or or Chris Columbus. Right, he did some uh, classic movies with John Candy, I believe. Right, mm-hmm. you know, you could do comedy. You could do all Harry comedies Potter. one year. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd love to do Three Amigos. Oh my Indiana God! Would be great. It's that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the films of Martin sure. Short. See who dies in the late winter, <gasps> and then. <laughs> wow! Did you just wish death on Martin Short? No. Okay, you got to clean your ears. I said, and you look, said <laughs> the films of Martin Short. Let's see who dies in the next right. in the winter. Films of Martin Short. Period. New paragraph. Let's see who dies in the winter, and then you do the whole season as in honor no, of them. That was 
films of Martin Short, same thought. No. Nope. Let's see who dies. There was clearly an a period, no, and I hit enter twice. He has a few more years left, I think. So. Yes, I was mad on this one. Isn't Thank you the you, cutest? Colby. I think we Short. should watch The Jerk. I think The Jerk would. Be oh, great. that's That'd a, be a great one. Too. Another all-time classic <laughs> comedy. Yeah. I love when he's hitchhiking, and the guy stops, and he goes. St. Louis? And he goes, no, Navin Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, a that's, jerk. That's up, there with, that's up there with that Forrest Gump line that I was telling you about the other day. Which one was that? Hey, Forrest, you ever been on a real shrimp boat? No, but I've been on a real big boat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love Intercom nah, Forrest. Do it again. What's that? I love Intercom Forrest. Give us one more. Oh, man, it's... All right. Uh, nope. I, it's got to be like nope, a, nope, nope. Be a all, conversation. All right. all right. I'm turning you off. Nope. You're going down. <laughs> Later. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, but you want to hear from the people. Let's see if anybody. Uh, okay. Here's a really good one for a family Deliverance. <laughs> um, Grant says themes are a good idea. John B. said, Wait. <laughs> John B. says Leslie Nielsen movies. That. I love Leslie Nielsen. You could do. All through. How many months is it that you do this for? We'll have four. So and four. And then a fifth one for rain date. You could do Naked Gun. You could do Airplane. Naked Gun Two. Airplane did you, Two. <laughs> did you watch the Did you watch the video I sent you the other day with him in it? Oh my God! You know he used to do this thing with, in interviews. He had this little thing he'd keep in his hand, and, and it was a it was a flatulence noise yeah. maker, right? And he would sit there in the interview, and they'd be like, "Okay, you ready?" He goes, "Yeah, sure, go ahead." You know, and, it, and and he does it with such a straight face and he keeps looking at him straight in the eye and they don't know if it's real or not. <laughs> and there's this like <laughs> compilation of him doing it. And it's so it's the funniest thing he ever did. Forget his movies. <laughs> That's the funniest thing he ever did. He's going, I feel good now. Yeah. <laughs> oh. like, he goes, oh, it's, it's like that salmon I had it. for lunch. Oh. Oh. It's like lean, he leans in. Oh, yeah. He, oh. <laughs> Crosses his leg. Like he did it on Letterman. And oh, like, my God. <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Um, can you get uncensored Blazing Saddles? Who'd want to watch that? Uncensored. But Young Frankenstein, that would be a good one. Yeah. I. You know, what's funny. I tried to show that to Chris uh, about a year and a half ago, and mm -hmm. she was like, no. Nah. What? Young she Frankenstein? She wasn't into it. I feel like Young Frankenstein is one of those movies you either loved or you don't yeah, like it at all. It's yeah. like Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is like mm -hmm. the same kind of. Yeah. You know, it's one of those movies you either get or you don't. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you're going to take the snooty approach to that, huh? <laughs> it's one of those movies you either have like the artistic depth to understand or you What are you saying about it? Do you want me to throw something at him? It's no. like rhythm. You yes. either have it or you don't. Please. What exactly. I would like to show, um, because it's just one of my favorite, I'm, I'll run out of favorite movies, so we need to reach out. But um, uh, Being There is one of my favorite films of all time. Is that Robert De Niro? No. I don't know that one. Wait, know. Robin Williams. No. I no. know. Oh, wait, don't tell me. 1978 or 79. Mm -hmm. Marlon Brando. No. No, wait. Don't tell me. Warren Beatty. <laughs> wait. <laughs> hold on. Oh, I really do know who's You're in this. It. I, it's, I'm going to eventually get it. Peter Sellers? No. being <laughs> Peter Sellers. It's Peter <laughs> yeah, Sellers. Yes. Thank you for looking it up, Colby. Oh, someone commented. <laughs> okay, Peter yeah, Sellers. Okay. Yeah. Peter Sellers it's is great. It's a beautiful film. Um, uh, and uh, Ordinary People. Love oh, that film. Yeah. Warren Beatty. Uh, again, no. Ned Beatty. <laughs> you know, a, uh, Ed Begley Jr. Yes. A good crowd pleaser is always Princess Bride. Oh, well, they showed They it, just did that, yeah. They just did it this summer at the Majestic, oh. and it had the biggest crowd of all of their summer. Mm -hmm. It is one of the greatest Princess movies Bride. ever made. Yeah. It is fantastic. Why, huh? <laughs> did, Why you, huh? did you ever read the book? No. no. Totally different. <clears throat> oh, it's yeah. very well, crazy. Most... Yeah, most yeah. films are very, very different. From I'm interested book. to see if anybody has any ideas on this before we move on. Uh, give us a call, 717-420-1978. I keep saying it the wrong way. Um, Indiana Jones, Back to the Future, Star mm -hmm. Wars. Those, yeah, the Back to the Future hard movies, to be good. hard to get, though. I think mm -hmm. they're hard to get. Yeah, once again, you have to secure it before you can do it. Of so course, and you, you got to pay for it. Well, yeah. of course, yeah. yeah. But sometimes they're not even available even if you wanted to pay for That's it. Right. So right. you have to secure that. You remember the 10 Angry Men? 12. Yeah. 12 Angry 12. Men. Sorry, yeah. 12. 12. I'm not the, a movie The buff. 10 Angry yes, Men didn't do as well. 
says the woman in charge of the film commission. No, I'm in charge of <laughs> community oh, outreach. <laughs> Community outreach and gathering my town with film. Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, I, I, I don't know much it, about medicine, says the head so, of the hospital. Hey, <laughs> just so you know, because of that reason, I have very clear eyes. No, that's true. It's absolutely that's, I right. Have very clear eyes. So totally just, true. You got to have business, somebody. I am a businesswoman. Yeah. And it makes sense to my business head. Yeah. And I'm very art, artistic at, in what I do for my business anyway. So it actually works in my headspace. Sure. And uh, you also know a lot of people around here. You grew up here. Yeah. yeah. So it, 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 yeah. Yeah. It, the it film commission, you can't it. do it because you love film. You have to actually know your town. Right. You have yeah. to know your people. Yeah. You have to know what you, and then you have to actually be a good human being yeah. that what you say you do. So anyway, that's true. Hello. <laughs> it's also, who are these people again on the movie? No, <laughs> you, know who, you know who else you could do is a Pauly Shore summer, like marathon, like all the good Pauly Shore movies. What, are you out of your mind, Colby? <laughs> You're nuts. In the army now, dude, you wouldn't watch that. Are you nuts? No. <laughs> what? No, he, no. Yeah, he's easy. I think he and Pauly would be pretty easy to get. He's, I think he's doing, uh, <laughs> You think? He's doing dinner theater down in Florida somewhere. Aww. Aww. Is, that what he's doing now? Is that what he's doing now? No. I'm and you're on a dress in Gettysburg. <laughs> yeah. No. no. I think I'd rather be doing dinner Paulie theater. Sure. If I were Actually, you. he's a really great guy, and I, I'm friends with friends of his, and I've heard he's a nice guy. Now, a who's his thing for me to say. Who's his mother? A casting director. No. What? Oh no, she owned uh, uh, Mitzi the Shore. The uh, yeah, she owned the laughing the Laugh like, Factory. Laugh Factory, I believe. Is that right? Or is it the Comedy Store? The Comedy one, Store. The Comedy one, Store. One of those on Sunset yeah. Boulevard. That's the yeah. one everybody talks about from like back in the day. From back yeah, in the day, and yeah. He, he literally grew up in that in that club. And you'd think some of that funniness would have run, rubbed off on him. Yeah. Yeah. What What can one say? <laughs> I don't know. if... I've like a Christian that. Slater is his mother was a casting director. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mary Jo, who's a fantastic casting director. I think she's retired now. I haven't heard, but a wonderful lady. Yeah. Huh. Well, well, him and like Kevin Bacon and all those guys seem like they got famous young, like in the same, they were like, uh, they, they came in like the same class essentially. You yeah. Know what I mean, yeah. Yeah. Bo, you're a producer. <laughs> <laughs> it's good of you to notice, Matt. Let me, can I can I run an uh, an idea by you? Tell me if you think it has legs for a sitcom. <laughs> okay. All right. So it goes a little something like this here. Let me just make sure I have uh, everything I need for this. I'm kind of nervous now because this is uh, this could be my make or break moment. Uh, probably break. Do you have sound effects with it? I have a song. Okay. So here's it's called Bethany. Okay. Um, I'll give you the cast first. Bethany, Charo. Isabel Sanford, Nell Carter, and Jack A. Harry. Um, apparently, uh, Nell Carter is dead. Probably Isabel Sanford, so we might have to recast those roles. But the premise is Bethany moves to Gary, Indiana to help her old aunt, played by Charo. Uh, eventually, the neighbors slash landlords who live downstairs uh, befriend her, and she ends up taking care of all of them. Now, here would be the opening theme. It takes place in the 1970s, so I said, uh, let's see. Moving on up. Yeah, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's actually more demonic. But when she cracks up, no. she jokes and snores. How lucky are we <laughs> to know a broad like Bethany? <laughs> Wonderful! I got, I got, I got chill bumps. Would you? Would, do you think that uh, has legs? Oh yeah, for sure. Let's uh, let's go for it. And then Charo's always bugging her. Why don't you get the man? You get a coochie coochie, you know. And then everybody laughs. Oh, coochie coochie. <laughs> you know, she said her tell her uh, big line, her catchphrase. And I'm, am I allowed to say I'm married, or is, am I not married? Oh, not in the, in the show. show. You're not married in the show. Oh, okay. No, you're single. You're a, a a single cat lady. 
You're single, but not you're single, but not ready to mingle. No, you're not ready to mingle. Well, you can't mingle because your aunt Charo is is old and she needs your help. She doesn't want to fall down the stairs and all that stuff. So you go and help her. It's a very nice thing to do. But then you become friends with the ladies downstairs, and I start taking care of everybody. And you take care of everybody because you can't say no. And selling crap. And you don't even have a job. And you don't even have a job. That's the worst part. You don't have a job, and nobody pays you. So you're helping them all day. That's why you have to sell crack. Yeah, and then they're like, you know, Charles like, okay, time to make me dinner. She gives you the money for the groceries. So you don't have to, it doesn't cost you anything, but you're not getting ahead. It's really a sad, it's like MASH, like kind of a dark comedy. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's kind of a sad, so actually maybe I need to rewrite this because it's making me depressed. All right, so tonight, I'm sorry, Saturday <laughs> night, um, what time do people show up? Seven. Mm -hmm. Show up at 7 o'clock. Who's the food truck going to be? So food truck is going to be uh, Latino Fusion. Oh, I, they're, I'm nice. friends with them. I love that. Okay, mm -hmm. the they're rice awesome. balls are fantastic. They're awesome. And then Bantam will be there for Wonderful. our drink uh, food truck. I wonder if they'll have uh, bags of little ground top for people to try. Uh, I just no, was at no, Bantam nice. today for a meeting, and I did see them. You did see them the there, yes, yes. Yes, there's only six left. Yes, and by the way, we do have something new that is starting um, Saturday. Uh, we are going to be having popcorn, not for sale, but we are going to bring youth into uh, being the ones giving out the popcorn. And whether it be, say, a Girl Scout troop or a Boy Scout or the football league, that's the little kids. They're going to be running it and we'll have a donation bucket. And it's oh. going to go to that youth association, whoever's going to be tending to our popcorn. So, so bring cash. Bring cash. So a lot of cash. Because children <laughs> cannot do. I'm going to take a little off yeah. the top. Yeah. Children <laughs> yeah. cannot swipe a card, <laughs> nor do, do I want that. Yeah. <laughs> One so, for you, kids. <laughs> two for me. No. I, just so you know. I got a nonprofit. I got to you. So everybody's been wondering where the popcorn is. So I've been really strategizing, yeah. trying to figure it out. Because yeah. um, it's usually up on the porch. Which well, is, right. is that throwing people off? Or, no, no, no. Oh. We haven't done popcorn yet because we've not. We've had a time. I've had. What do you mean? I've had popcorn. You were there for the Gettysburg. Movie, Gettysburg. That was That us. was seminary. Uh, so because they do have a popcorn machine. Yeah, yeah. But we also, because it takes a crew of four people plus some. We have a lot to do before everybody shows up. I don't have time to be the popcorn girl. Um, I'm organizing everything. They're physically doing everything. There's no time for it. So I was trying to figure out how to do popcorn without it being one more thing I have to do. Mm. So I did talk to the seminary. They have the popcorn machine and I don't want kids popping popcorn with a hot machine and breaking it. Sure. So I tried to figure out getting how to burned. do it. Correct. Um, so I did try to figure it out. We're going to um, launch it this Saturday. We're going to have the kids serving popcorn in popcorn bags and there'll be so like a, a microwave with Orville Redenbacher. No, 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 this is good no, popcorn. no. It's going to okay. be in the it'll, popcorn it'll, machine it'll and be all in the that popcorn stuff. Machine. But it's going to be, be safe for the kids. So an adult will, will pop it and they'll just put we it in We have bags. it. It's right. just one of those things I've been trying to figure it out and it all kind of solidified for this coming one. I then for next year, because everything is about community outreach, right? It's a free event. It's to bring community back together. And I actually wanted the youth to be able to um, what gave me the idea is at the farmer's market, they had a youth entrepreneur day yeah. and there was these precious kids that did popcorn and I did try to get a hold of them. They weren't available for Saturday, but it got me thinking about our youth. Yes, we're watching film. We're trying to bring the classicness back. We're trying to bring back the understanding. There goes Debbie does Dallas. Yes, we will <laughs> never show that. Um, so anyway, so w this will be the first time the kids will be tending to <laughs> popcorn and really start. <laughs> did you edit me? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, anyway. 30 seconds after you said it. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I personally think it's absolutely no, fresh. Yeah, it's I nice. love it. It's and nice. it's something that they could do without it being hard for them. They would love it. They love being a part of it. And then it would be a fundraiser for, for whatever they their, do. what yeah. their event is. Yeah, that's so great. Yeah, anyway, the only problem time. is is the the uh, the age because we. what if we have a... A, a film like an R-rated film. Uh, well, uh, with cuss words. And stuff or like PG-13. Yeah, and then there's, the yeah. kids are watching it selling popcorn. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you get your popcorn before the movie. Yeah. I don't or know I can, I can send them home. I yeah. can bring this, and I can just sit there, and every time they... 
beep, I can beep. just beep it. Yeah. No. <laughs> beep, beep. No. So no, it's a begin. It's in the beginning when the food trucks are there and um, how you're going to get your food. You're going to get your bag of popcorn. Yeah. Kids aren't going to stay there for a late night. They're no. kids. They're going to hightail no. it out I'm, of there. I was just kidding. Yeah. 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 So no, we're really trying to incorporate that. So fun. It will be this. It'll it'll start this Saturday. We're going to you know get it going this Saturday and try to figure out how to how we can um, accent that. I'm curious to see how they react next month at psycho. Uh, that's what's fascinating to me is uh, watching psycho with like mm -hmm. younger people who are used to all the gore right. and the, right. you know, constant motion mm -hmm. and the quick cuts and all that mm -hmm. at psycho. You have to actually think like right. you got to pay attention. Right. You got to think you got to, yeah. you got to feel. Yeah. Welcome to well, different it's a writing. It's, it's, yeah. it's a horror drama. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more, it's a drama. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a yeah, psychological it's, thriller. It's a psychological right. thriller. It's a, it's a horror it's, thriller it's psychological really drama. drama. Mm -hmm. you know? It's terrifying. It's terrifying. It, it was the beginning of terrifying. It I mean, was, it really it honestly started, was the beginning yeah. where it, they it gave really you, was. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I made Cindy watch it a few, well, I guess it would have been uh, the week of when right. you were going to have it. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually surprised. I thought that she would be kind of bored by it because... You know, it's the 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 shower scene. It, it's dated, right? It's yeah. dated. We're and, used to. And she's a millennial, right? No, she's no. basically my age. I'm kidding. Yeah, she's a couple he years was younger than me. Trying to pay her a compliment. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, yeah, she's, she's much younger. She's oh, yeah. drastically yes. younger. She's a millennial. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know the millennials. Yeah. And so she, uh, but she she really liked it, and and all the way to the end, I, I thought she would have figured it out, you know, mm -hmm. but she. And usually when we watch movies, she falls asleep like 15 minutes. I in. get you, Cindy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this movie, she was with it the whole time. And I was like, all right, she's mm -hmm. digging this movie. I really was like excited about it. You know, and it got to the end all the way. And, and it surprised her. Yeah. Did and she was, smack you? No, why? When it happened? Yeah. No, I was laying in the lazy boy and she was over on the couch. So I can just see her yeah. being like, what? No, no. She threw an ashtray at me, which was weird because we don't have why any. Why do you have ashtrays? We don't. Right. Thank right. You. And so I'm like, mm -hmm. where did that come from? But she keeps them under the cushion for just such a moment. I didn't know that. She'll explain oh. it to you when oh, she comes okay. in later. All right. All right. So, uh, so seven o'clock, get out there. Movie starts at eight. Uh, streetcar named Sunset is what we're going to be watching. No, it's Sunset Boulevard, right? Right. Okay, William Holden and Gloria Steinem. Gloria Steinem. And, yes, <laughs> and uh, it's fun. It's free. Bring your own booze. Bring your own drinks if you want. But you guys have water there too, which of course, uh, right? Well, actually, the food trucks will have oh. all that available. So mind you, food again, trucks. trying to get it off of our plate so music begins at seven. Food trucks are ready to go. Popcorn will be there. Hang out. And I have to tell you, people, and the very fun thing that's been happening is they're bringing things. They're sitting in their chairs. They're um, bringing their little tables. They have tablecloths. They have cocktail glasses. It's, it's like the super yes. Fun. It's like British so, yeah, officers out on campaign. Awesome. So yeah, hey, yeah. bring your picnic stuff, whatever you want, and just come mm -hmm. hang out. Starting at seven, and then as soon as sun goes down, we'll start the intro and uh, begin the screen. And if anybody brings foie gras, I'd really like to try it. I've never had it before, so uh, please let me know if you see yeah. me there. Oh my, guys! Thank you very much for coming on and uh, talking you. about this. Uh, good luck with it. I'll see you Saturday, and we'll see all of you Saturday as well. Thank we'll be right back. You. Been craving a hot pocket or a bag of popcorn? Now's the time to go and get it. We'll be right back. Stop blowing so hard, you blowhards. Uh, it's the Walk Tallers, the Jazz Division. Um, you know what I'm going to do on October 20th, Beth? What are you going to do on October 20th, I am Beth? going all the way out to Campton Hills, Illinois. I'm going to... and I'm, are you I'm really? Yeah, and I'm taking my bicycle. I'm going to ride my oh, bike okay. out there. You're not. Okay. Uh, no, I'm going. Uh, the Garfield Farm Museum presents the Battle of Gettysburg in depth with Gary Edelman, our good friend... He's going to talk about fighting. He's going to talk about photos, folklore, and Illinois' contribution to America's greatest battle. You know what that is? Gettysburg. Battle of Gettysburg right there. Uh, you know, of course, for those of you who don't know, which I can't imagine who doesn't know Gary Edelman, 
but he is a Gettysburg uh, licensed battlefield guide. He's the chief historian for the American Battlefield Trust, and he's the vice president of the Center for Civil War Photography. That's why I texted him earlier to get the answer I to that question. I always forget about that part it's of It's good his to know life. people. It's good to know people. Yeah. Well, I didn't know until last week, so that's okay. Oh, really? Yeah, I said it on the air. Special features, 8th Illinois Cavalry reenactors, live Civil War era music by Last Night's Fun. Tickets are $95. They're available at garfieldfarm.org. Uh, info at garfieldfarm.org is the email address that you want. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's definitely worth doing. I'll tell you that. One of our patrons, Sharon, is uh, is putting it on. This is her organization. She's a part of this organization. Okay. And uh, seats are limited, though, ladies and gentlemen. Advanced purchase is highly recommended. Don't think you could just show up. You know, don't pull a mat. And just show up and go, well, you could fit me in, right? Do you know who I am? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is an in-depth, intense seminar. It's not recommended for children. So keep that in mind as oh, well. Oh, wow. Net mm. proceeds go to benefit the Garfield Farm Museum. That's Gary Edelman, October 20th, 2024. Garfield Farm Museum, Campton Hills, 8 to 6 p.m. Be there. B square, 630-584-8485. Sing it, girl. You picture the 20th main, and you're happy once again. Fight the battle against being slow. With what? With little brown top row. All right, sis. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really wanted to say little brown top yo. Mm. Well, if we want to appeal to all sexes, then that's what we'll do. <laughs> Um, okay. Only uh, men can drink this coffee. The little ground top blend from Bantam Roasters. Nestled here in the historic town of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, is a well-crafted coffee that showcases a beautiful blend of flavors. The combination of oh, Jesus. cacao, wildflowers, and toasted sugar creates a nuanced cup of coffee. Wow. That is both intriguing and satisfying. This is not good for lyrics. No. It's a great choice for those who appreciate a complex profile with a touch of sweetness and floral elegance. Whether you're a seasoned coffee drinker or just looking to elevate your morning routine, this blend is sure to impress. So whether you're near or far, Bantam Roasters, well, let them bring a taste of Gettysburg to you. By going to addressinggettysburg.com slash cafe or <laughs> dropping in at Phantom Roasters and picking up a bag whenever you get a chance. <laughs> that 82 Steinwehr Avenue, across from the Dobbin House, Little Ground Top, Bayonets. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, the studio line costs us money, so use it. Call 717-420-1978 to join the discussion, ask a question, or whatever. Just just stop us from wasting money on the damn phone line. Uh, We're back. All right. All right. So before before we get to our guest, uh, I have something to show you. What is that for me? No, no, no. I want to talk about it. Yeah, that's what I'm about to oh, do, okay. too. So we got one, too. Uh, oh. oh, I thought it was special. No, you're not. And uh, I would like to show this to Cindy. Cindy doesn't know we got it. Oh. Okay. Our friends in the back there, John B. and Kate, uh, gave us this. This is something Kate made. You want to guess? Guess what it is. Take a guess. It's some sort of a leaf. It is some sort of a right. leaf. All right. So you say she some heard. sort of a leaf. Andy, I, what do well, you think? You I take it. All right. Okay. No, no, no. What what ours is, oh, not hers. Well, I, no, I don't know. Oh, take I a have, guess. Just. Uh, uh, we'll go. A leaf. With, yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Andy, would you we'll like to take that. a wild guess? Andy Biggio, ladies and gentlemen, oh, uh, author of The Rifle. Of what's in the paper? Yes. No, well, of what in, I have in, here on my lap. On his <laughs> <laughs> Andy, what is in my lap? <laughs> a loincloth. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> Andy, you have 30 seconds to guess what is in my lap. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, really. What do I have here? Just a guess. 
A leaf. Okay. How about you? <laughs> a bag of coffee. Bag of coffee. I love that. Um, something with a beaver on it. Beaver. Uh-oh. I have a beaver in my lap. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Ready, Sin? That's a good one. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Camera. Oh, no. You put it on Cindy, too, so we can see her reaction, because this is really nice. This is a really nice gift. Ready? Here we go. <gasps> oh, oh, my gosh. Look at her. That's our oh, dog. That's Major. This is so She painted great. that with brushes and paint. Oh, my God. As you do. As you do. Isn't that cute? Hold it up to the camera so that they can oh. look at. We well, don't have to go right up to it. But yeah, there you go. Oh, um, here. look at Put little a little mage. light on it. Look how cute. and it really oh, like goodness. captures her expression. It does. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you so much. She's saying, "I'm gonna bite your ankles." Yeah. And scratch you. Just go ahead. Walk past me. In the daddy pose. <laughs> Oh. All right. Well, so uh, thank you uh, to John and Kate. Katie did all the work on that one, right? Okay. Oh, thank you, so Katie. That was beautiful. Cool. Thank you very much for that. Um, round mm. of applause for Katie, everybody. Come on. Can we get a shot of Katie so she can wave to the camera? There we go. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> all right. Thanks for clapping back there, guys. Jeez. I mean, swear to God, they fall asleep. Okay. Go ahead, Bethany. Your turn. <laughs> so, and I got... This. Westfield, Westfield, New York. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That is now, really and nice. It, and it's it's a leaf. It, it's a leaf that was pressed into pressed. Okay. into yes. clay. Um, wow, you are John, really artistic. John, why, why don't you guys yeah, uh, come, come, in, come in here, here real quick? Uh, whoever so, made it. Yeah, I'm not uh, doing either it. One of you. Come justice. on, both of you. Come on, just... One of you. We got we got gifts back here, too. All right, well, good, good, good. Uh, just come on in and uh, tell us what you got. Uh, what we got? Who made this? Was uh, Katie made? Uh, why is it so hard to leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there Okay. Oh, look at that. Okay, you got one too. So, John, what do you, what do we got here? It's just a, it's a local art, artisan that presses a grape leaf. Into, grape leaf. Okay. Into a piece of clay, fires it, and then basically the fire burns off the leaf, and you're left with just the veins of the leaf. Huh. So and she trims it to make it look like the leaf. So that's really neat. That's so those are the actual yeah. veins of yeah, the leaf. So everyone is unique, yeah. basically, we have right? Five wineries in our area. So uh, everything is great. Okay. That's, that's right. Look at my gift here. Oh, now we're talking, yeah. baby. Oh. All right. Show the camera, not us, Colby. Yeah. I'm trying to show us right now. No, well, show it to your camera. You're, you're above. You're on the above. Oh, there you go. <laughs> You got a camera right in your face, so you're showing it to the window. What is that? Is that, it's is that bourbon? This is a, a white wine that was aged, he said, in a bourbon cask. Ooh, oh, that's wow. nice. Oh. Oh, oh that's a, ooh, ooh, I'm so happy now. <laughs> yeah, baby. Okay, Johnson Estate. You should have guessed that when I said, guess what's in my life. <laughs> Bourbon. Old Johnson oak ruby estate. dessert wine. Oh, those are nice. Aged in bourbon barrels for 12 months. Well, very good. Oh, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you got to come visit sweet. more often. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I heard there were sweet treats. There are there lots too. of sweet treats uh, back well, there from Cindy. Cindy okay. brought sweet treats. Oh, tea. yeah. All right. Great. Well, thank you for that, Cindy, and as well. Cindy, I was very impressed that you use butterscotch Ooh. on it. That's After my, my and I uh, guess that you could find it, right? Yeah, you could find. find butterscotch because I had to go to the local Amish family and bribe them <laughs> into buying twenty five pounds. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. All right. So um, before we uh, go on to our, our guest here, one more thing to tell you, and that is that uh, the Get Out of the Car tours are this weekend, and we are honoring our buddy Peter Carmichael by wearing scarves. So if you have a scarf, wear it, because this is a, the year anniversary from the tour that he did with Lewis Trott uh, out on Oak Ridge, um, and we all wore scarves then. So to commemorate that and to uh, honor our buddy Pete's life, we are going to wear scarves. That was Estella Beard and Beth Wheeler's idea. What a great idea. And I was like, that's exactly what I said. What a great idea. So I that's what we're going to do. I wear one at the World War II. There you go. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's Peter Carmichael Day Peter here on Addressing Day. Gettysburg. And, uh, and yeah, so uh, let's do that. Okay. 
Andy Biggio. Great to see you, my friend. <laughs> Good to see you, too. Here, scooch, over. Uh, scooch over a little bit so you can get in the sure, camera there. Actually, the... you want to kind of see it a little bit behind her because you're taller, so you right. don't want to get in the shot. There we go. Aww. You got it. There he is. Andy, you're looking good, man. You've been uh, working out, huh? <laughs> Not at all. Not, Not at all. all. Really? No, no. Oh, clearly Stress. he has. I mean, Stress I have. Stress yeah. makes you lose yeah. weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stress makes you lose weight. Have you been stressed? Yeah. Yeah. Really? Tell me about it. Go ahead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, pull, pull, up, just pull that closer to your mouth. Sure. No, I, I'm kidding. Um, you know, uh, I got a five-year-old and a three-year-old now. Oh, boy. I'm working full-time. Oh. I'm doing the author stuff. Oh. I'm returning veterans to Europe. Yeah, I'm you, traveling, you know, so the days of pumping weights and getting it, please. So it's just, you're just not getting fat is what it is. Basically. Yeah. 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 And how is it? Tell us about that. You're taking the vets over to Europe. That's really cool. You've been doing that with Eric and are you doing that on your own too or? Uh, yeah, I've always done it on my own. Eric, uh, Eric jumped on, well, Eric's been Eric doing Dorr, his We're thing. talking about. Right. The Ponytail Express. He's been, ta- <laughs> <laughs> he's, been ta- <laughs> he's been taking veterans with his dog prof. <laughs> Well, now I'm never going to not look at him in the mouth. Thanks for that. <laughs> no, I love we got to get t-shirts made that say the Ponytail thing. Express. I love torturing him. He's stepped up so bu- so big for the veterans, for me. Yeah. Um, we really did form a good alliance. It's funny. And um, so, yeah, he, him and I have, have been working together now. It's got to be at least two years. Um, <clears throat> and I'm up. Probably I've surpassed over 50 World War II veterans returned to Italy, the oh, Netherlands, wow. um, Belgium, Luxembourg, Germany, France, Belgium. Um, it's been un- uh, really been completely unforgettable. And then now this December marks the 80th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge, and it will be the last time I take living World War II veterans back. So yeah, that's the— I'm that's... calling it a retirement. The 80th is a good time to stop. It's not getting easier. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, these guys got to be in their 90s. Uh, hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how many are you taking over there? I'm bathing them. <laughs> God bless point. you. Are yeah. you really? Yeah. 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 So, but it's, it's, they're happy. They're laughing their ass. Yeah, off. of course I'm they are. Hosing them down after we, got, after, we <laughs> well, it tickles. A, after we, visit, after we visit a battlefield, they had a couple glasses of wine. They're getting more attention. Yeah. They were going, they're having a great time. Hey, Andy, guess it's what's in my lap? Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My little up one grand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, so it's, uh, no, it's, but honestly, all joking aside sure. though, for a moment, mm-hmm. if we can, that is really an honorable thing that you're doing, especially mm-hmm. when you add the bathing part. I mean, yeah. really, Honestly, I, I I don't know people who are, you know, who are like within their own family that could bathe a relative that. like that. Yeah. And you're doing that for strangers. I started it seven years ago when, when you know, if they were in their mid to early 90s, uh, they were still taking care of themselves pretty much. Or they could come with a family member or their even their wife or spouse could take care of them. Now, um, the minimum age is 100. So if mm-hmm. I'm asking them to come to Europe with me, help. Well, first of all, I'm bringing them back to their battlefield for free, and them and and the, but they're also doing a big part promoting my book. Of course, a lot of the people come there not to meet Andrew Bridger; they come. They to want meet. to meet these guys. That exactly. Yeah, are, now, are these the guys that you wrote about? Yeah, yeah. So okay, so it's not just any old vets that can go. These Both. are this. Okay, oh, it is. Okay, Both. okay, good. So now, how, wait, I I know I just asked this, but I forgot. How many did you say you bring it over typically? Um, so to date, over the last six or seven years, I have returned over 50 World War II veterans, different 50 World War II veterans to their battlefields. So the biggest group I ever took over collectively was 2019. I brought 16 World War II veterans to the wow. 75th anniversary of the Battle of the Bulge. Now, you have help taking care of Absolutely, them, right? Yeah. It's not just you going around and hosing so down So I'm everybody. a first responder, so I usually ask either police or firemen or EMTs and okay, paramedics good. to come with me, younger veterans. Yeah. And the bond between younger veteran who may have served in Iraq and Afghanistan with a World War II veteran on the battlefield looking at their foxholes, it's like unforgettable. Yeah, I bet. It really is an addiction. I, I love doing it. It's a positive addiction. And I have to say, I really admire that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, that's, that's not easy. I mean, you know, I used to take my grandfather around. We'd go on trips to Virginia to visit our relatives down there and everything and you know, he was well, he's 87 when he died. So, you know, he was still all right, but he had macular degeneration, mm-hmm. so he couldn't see. So when we'd walk, he'd have to kind of hold his arm and stuff like that. And, you know, it was it was tough. Like, it's a lot of work, but it, it's totally different. I didn't have to sponge bath him and, you know. And, <laughs> hey, I, I, I didn't mean, say sponge, all right? You're, just, you're, getting, you're getting real intimate over there. <laughs> what do you do? Just take him in the backyard and get the hose? Oh, oh, oh. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't touch her. No. I, <laughs> no, I usually scream at them in German and throw cold water at them. You know, just Stalag 7B, man. All right? That's what we do. <laughs> we bring the battlefield to their bedroom at this point. Okay. Yeah. Oh God, that's funny. No, um, so I'll I'll get a um, a shower chair. We'll set it up. We'll set them down. We'll take the hot shower hose. Hey, brother, we had a great day today. No, oh, I'm sorry, you have to do this to me. No, this is mm-hmm. my. You know, it really is an honor. You know, mm-hmm. and because they have most of them at this point have outlived their spouse. Yeah, some of them have outlived their own their children, children at a hundred. Yeah, sure, and they're sitting at home wondering why am I still alive? And yeah. then this kid comes to their house with a rifle. Will you sign my rifle? Hey, have you ever been back? To your airfield in Belgium, or your, you know, uh, where you liberated in Italy, you know they celebrate you guys every year. No, I guess I will go back and let's go. You know, so do you find do you find that they um, when you ask them that do they jump at the chance or do they have to think about it? Uh, honestly, it's funny you say that. They all, all so they've all denied their own family members. Let's just say in the seventies and eighties when they were like, "Grandpa, let's go to Rome. Let's go to Italy. Mm-hmm. Let's go to Paris." And they're like, "No." Um, now it's like they regretted doing not saying no to their own family member when they were like ambulatory, right? And then now it's mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, I will. I think I will go back." When they tell me they have to think about it, I usually get the no. Yeah, sure. because. They suffer from incontinence. They have, they can't walk too good. They're worried about being a burden. They're yeah. worried about a stranger taking care of them. Um, I've been so lucky. I've brought in so many legends back to where they fought infantry guys to their, to the very houses they, you know, uh, sought shelter in mm. during the battle yeah. of the bulge. So what is that like to watch that though? I mean, you know, you, 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 you know, especially if it's guys that, did something that's depicted in a movie or a TV show like Band of Brothers mm-hmm. or whatever that we've seen. We all know the stories. We know the Hollywood version of them. Mm-hmm. But to see them, the real guys, go to these spots, what, well, first of all, how do they react to that? And then what is it like? Do you step aside and just kind of let them take it in? So I purposely did not write about um, Band of one, Brothers guys, the 101st yeah. Airborne. Uh, the Marines that raised the flag on Iwo Jima, because this, those stories were told a million times over. All the credit to those guys, all the credit to the authors of those guys. They brought so much awareness and attention to veterans and sacrifices of American soldiers. But there were so many other divisions that fought in World War II that the United States people, kids, high schoolers don't even know about. Yeah, sure. But yet if you go to, uh, if you go to St. Hubert, Belgium, they have the 87th Infantry Division's logo on the town hall. Really? Because that's who liberated them, the uh, Acorn Division. Like, who the hell has yeah, ever heard of an acorn? Yeah, that's yeah. not even badass. It's not a screaming <laughs> eagle. It's a friggin' acorn. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't see the Germans running away from an acorn. Yeah, look, the acorns are coming. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> Everybody run. Oh, jeez. I hope they don't bop us to death on our nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so... But the fact that this whole town hails the Acorn Division to bring guys from the Acorn Division to walk the streets yeah. of St. Hubert, Belgium with them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, where's this band of acorns? <laughs> you know what I mean? With band of acorn brothers. Like, <laughs> where's this? You know? So I got hooked on bringing little, uh, little less known divisions back over there. And it's, 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 it's mind blowing. I'll give you an example. Um, I have, when I see them get emotional, I step back Mm -hmm. because when I bring them to particularly the graveyards for the first time and they see a friend that they've never seen before, I'm all about surprise. I like shock value. So when they tell me about, oh, I knew a guy named Teddy Smith. He was my wingman. I was in the 493rd fighter group. He went down somewhere over Cologne, Germany. And these guys went home. They forgot about the war. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. They moved on with their lives. That was the best therapy they could do. Start family. So most guys did not go to reunions. Yeah, I brought Ed Cottrell at 101 years old to the Maragraten Cemetery in Holland, and he told me about his roommate in wingman, Ted Smith, who went down on a P-47 on um, December 17th, 1944, and I found his grave, and I didn't tell him. I just walked along the graves, and I pretended we were just visiting guys to see if we could see who was from Massachusetts. He spots Ted, Ted Smith's graves, falls to his knees at 101 years old. Oh. 
grabs that grave and starts crying. Oh God. Mm. Yeah. I have video of it. Yeah. You know, and I don't want to see that. Yeah. So <laughs> I can't when, when I learned, when I saw that, now I let, I step back and give them their space because it's not about me putting the camera in their face. Right. Likes. Don't be it's that like, asshole. No, hell no. But at the same time, I have to press record because these kids need to know about sacrifice. They're not learning about World War II the, yeah, like we right. did. They're not. You're right about that. So it's like, I need to show the human. Get a effect. zoom lens. Yeah. Well, don't I, get in their face. No, no, I just do this. Yeah. Okay. There you go. You know, I do yeah. that number. I put it between my, you know, whatever. The same thing I do when I record people on the job. Um, Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, it's, it's, um, now I can take that story about Ed Cottrell visiting Ted Smith's grave and tell you five more stories, you know, uh, and I'll just do another quick one. Um, I had a World War II veteran tell me, you know, I've seen Band of Brothers, I've seen Saving Pride, and I've watched movies my whole life, and I got to be honest with you, I've never seen this her heroism stuff. The stuff you see in movies where everyone's a hero and guys get medals and everyone's running and shooting 100 rounds and nobody dies, and he said, I didn't see that. I saw a lot of scared children mm. on both sides, he mm. said. I saw war crimes on both sides. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't identify with these m movies, he told me. And his name was Harvey Siegel with the 2nd Infantry Division. And he agreed to go back with me to Elsenborn's Ridge, which was a part of Belgium and Germany where they fought and they held off the Germans during the Battle of the Bulge. He said, I stayed uh, in a town called Hamhelken. No, excuse me, Hack Heckenfeld. Um, I know I'm probably bu uh, butchering it. Heck Hackenfeld. I stayed in town. My tour guide knew exactly where Heck Hackenfeld. It's 10 houses. We went over a little bridge, a little stream, and he said, that's where I slept. I slept in that house right there. And I said, well, it looks like it's a bed and breakfast now. Mind you, none of us speak German. I go, let's knock on the door. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm not going to knock on the door. You know, we basically kicked these people out of gunpoint and slept in their beds, you know. So my friend knew broken, a little bit of broken German. You know, Harvey sitting on the wheelchair on the road. He won't come down the driveway to the Aww. bed and breakfast. <laughs> Yeah. And the bed and breakfast is clearly unoccupied. They're not renting today or whatever. <laughs> we knock on that door. My buddy in broken English and on Google Translate says, we're with a soldier who says he slept here during the war. The woman responds, those are my grandparents. She told me when the Americans came and kicked oh, them out. Wow. We have no hard feelings. Come in and have beer. We drank beer with these people and celebrated. And Harvey picked out where he slept. And it was. That's so cool. We that is really. all hugged each other and yeah. drank beer. and. The, all the veterans I was with, even the ones that weren't at that house, were saying, thank God, you know, we're happy the war's over, no more wars, and it was all BS, and we, they got us drunk and gave us a big <laughs> beer stein and everything, yeah. Uh, that's got to choke you up. Yeah. The one time I, I really came to tears, not to keep going story after story, was I was in Italy, Italy, and um, <laughs> so... I went to it. I don't know how much time I get, but I was in a small town called Tremensoli, and it was liberated by the 85th Infantry Division. And I brought back a guy named Rocco Talese. He's still alive. Typical loudmouth Italian from Boston, <laughs> like me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a guy who was at every reunion since 1970. Okay. He did go to Italy back five times, and did, you know this, and I know this guy, and I know this guy, and. He's walking around Italy when we go back with him and another guy who's never been back. So I'm, I'm really centering the trip around the guy who's never been back and lost his leg at Monte Casino rather okay. than Rocco, the loudmouth who knows everything. And <laughs> every reunion knows General right. Mark Clark, knows all this. Sure. <laughs> so we return Al Bucciarelli to where he lost his leg. Very emotional. See his squad leaders great for the first time. Emotional again. And Rocco's got this black trash bag of black and white photos and newspaper clippings of when he's been back to Italy. Okay. And he's going around every town we go to, and he's trying to talk to these Italians that he has these pictures. I'm like, Rocco, they don't care. They don't care, dude. They have old pictures. We're not in France or Belgium where they're very all about the, the, the uh, liberation. This is Italy. They were kind of like. On well, the losing side. Foot and mouth. We stopped in the town trim and solely. Rocco breaks out this bat, old trash bag he's carrying around of pictures. The guy starts recognizing people in the photos. Oh, wow. And he says, there's a woman here in this photo. She's still alive. She's 99 years old. We go down an alleyway. Her house is still covered in bullets. She's lived in the same house since the war. 
She answers the door. The two of them reunite for the first time since the war with the photo. And I, the tears were pouring out of my yeah, head. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can hear you kind of getting a little uh, choked up now. Because it's like, who Keep, would have thought? And here I am. Describe at, the scene. Um, um, <laughs> <laughs> so she's wearing a small crop top. No, okay. <laughs> no I'm trying to get you to cry. I'm over here bawling. Yeah, well, it's that's on, not hard. It's on hard YouTube. To... If you type in World War II veterans return to Italy... Just it. World yeah. War II veterans returned to Italy. It's uh-huh. the number one video. We got an Emmy for it because of that scene. One of that, that an scene. Emmy. Yeah. How'd yeah. you get an Emmy? Best military uh, documentary. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Emmy. Well, I should have said Emmy Award winning Andy Biggio. Yeah. Well, why didn't you tell me that? No, oh, it's that was five years ago. Yeah, but uh, it's news to me. Yeah. It was, and um, that's news to me. Yeah. Best military. Um, documentary of of that year 20 whatever it was 2020 2019 they mailed it to me because it was covid so it, right, we didn't even get right, to like get right, it you know they yeah. just mailed it to you oh, yeah you wouldn't have gone a, you a wouldn't have gone on anything? the stage and they wouldn't let you do that <laughs> you love me you really love me so you really like me. yeah world war ii veterans return to italy you will not regret it. it's an hour of awesomeness so. okay well yeah. that's really good andy uh, uh uh-huh. we're gonna do the news now do you want to stick around and and make fun of the news with me and colby yeah while and, the girls and read I, and i do want to point out i'm gonna be here He's on the 29th oh yeah. i'm sorry yeah. in this building yeah with five world war ii veterans on september 29th i'm bringing five world war ii veterans to this building we're gonna do a book signing so, so you're going to be in the in the back building to yeah. this one here yeah. that we're not up front. Yeah, on the 29th, okay. um, Rocco, who's in the video. Oh, really? Right? He's going to be here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, now I want to meet him. Oh, I got yeah. it. Yeah. 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 So. 29th is what day? Sunday. Sunday. Mm-hmm. You okay. know how I am about old men. I just love them so much. <laughs> Bethany is, though. Yeah, she's got really a weird. So all I can think while I you're talking. I self-identify as 98. Bethany's got a new boyfriend. <laughs> Adam to always. The list. Adam to the list. Yeah, so I know. one of the things he's not her type though. I know. Why? He's too young and yeah. in shape. You like old guys that are just, you know. What are you trying to say about Mark? That are just No, like, besides wrinkly. Mark. But oh. all your boyfriends are old men. Yeah, like That's rinc- true. Rink- like wrinkly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Duct tape she thinks they're blue. adorable. I just love them. <laughs> She just loves Well, him. there's going to be five sets of wrinkly balls <laughs> now on the 29th, okay? All you can eat. <laughs> he knows. He knows how wrinkly they are. Trust me. I've seen some. I was like, how do I get under? In the shower, I'm like, how do I get under that? Do I throw it over? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if we aren't being censored yet. We are. <laughs> oh my god! We'll be here in a minute. That is so funny. <laughs> How do I get under that? <laughs> Holy crap! Uh, well, listen, girl. Okay, so girl? give us give us that again. 29th of uh, September. Yep, a couple weeks. Here at what time? Uh, One p.m. We'll have Rocco Talese from the 85th Division, Richard Weaver from the 17th Airborne, Ed Cottrell from the 493rd Fighter Group. And who am I missing? Oh, Christy Fier from the 26th Infantry Division. You're not going to get these guys all in one room probably ever again. Ever again, so, yeah. right. And uh, uh, it's a stupid question to ask, but I have to ask it because I know a lot of people in the audience are probably wondering the same thing. Uh, any relation to Kim Cattrall? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, the first thing on their mind. Oh, yeah. really? Okay, nobody's thinking that. All no. right. Well, well <laughs> what, what was I the know? name of the film again? World War II Vets. Return to Italy, and you'll Why see. Why am I writing it on this one? I know I'm going to yep. throw that. So, um, and you'll see it. You'll see it by the rifle, and um, it was a remarkable trip. You know, we brought a guy back who lost his leg when he was 19. He vowed to never return to Italy; that it ruined his life, and that he was embarrassed to go home and see his mom again with one leg. And we took him back to where he lost his leg, and to the squad leader's grave. That the same explosion that took his leg off killed the squad leader. So, mm. well. Uh, I'm sure people are going to come out for that. You have to go to the front building, though, even though it's going to be in this building. You Correct. can't enter in yep. the door here. You have mm-hmm. to go up front. What is the address? I think that's 223 you gotta, you gotta Baltimore. Pay, you got to pay the ponytail tax. That's right. The ponytail <laughs> tax. What did you call What did you say? What did you call them before? Well, our trips, we, we call the ponytail express. The ponytail express. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So you got to go to the conductor of the ponytail express yeah. and... <laughs> And pay your your ticket. Make sure you got your ticket stubs. Yeah, there's no there's no tickets. We just we have books available. Yeah, it's free. Yeah. We have books available, or bring your own book and uh, meet these gentlemen and and me. And now uh, this book, 
The Rifle 1 and The Rifle 2, and then Eric will have his uh, book, Fierce Valor, yeah. And that book is for you, signed to you, my good man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, because yep. actually, because you did give me one, but... Uh, Volume I, 1, I think, I gave you, I, right? know, I think you gave me both, but oh. I, I let somebody... Oh, maybe you didn't give me this. I thought you only had one. It was cutting no, it close, right, because I don't... Right. I had two copies. Isn't that crazy? That's what, one year ago I was on your show? Oh, is that what that meant? One year ago today. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was two years ago. No. No, it was one year ago. It was one year ago. Yeah. Because you were here. here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Today. Today. Yeah. Today. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Happy anniversary, bro. (laughs) Give me a hug. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Well, yeah. yeah. All right. Are you coming to dinner with us? I'm negotiating with, uh, well, I made plans with Eric. You know how he is about food. Oh, God, yeah. The hoof and but the they're, they're place, probably though. already eating now. Oh, yeah, they do eat early. They do. Yeah, they're yeah. old, you know. They've already eaten. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm a dead man now. Yeah, yeah, you're going to get <laughs> The cut. ponytail wasn't We're, the thing. I'm the, 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 the geriatric. We're story. all dead now. But you're right. You, I had two copies of Rifle One. Maybe. Whatever. And I let somebody Maybe. borrow it, and I can't remember who it is, and, and he has it back. A door stopper. Use it as a door No, no, no. Door. I'm no. going to read it. Because the rifle one is great. It's got great stories. Um, back to the battlefield. Andrew Vizio, great. C- congratulations. And now we would love your uh, wonderful commentary during the news segment. But ladies and gentlemen, and ladies, especially you two, I have to tell you, for whatever reason, I've been using this song that I got on a royalty-free site uh, for months, right? How long mm-hmm. has it been since we started doing it? Uh, almost a year. Yeah, yeah, right. Probably yeah. a year. Yeah. Last week, for some reason, on YouTube, it gets a copyright strike. Right now, it's no big deal. I just have to share the revenue with the person. But I'm like, wh- why would you put it out as royalty free and then all of a sudden say, no, give me royalties? Like, that's stupid. So we're going to come up with something different for the news. This may very well, well be. We need to add Cindy to it anyway. That, that's true. Why this, don't you just. Well, because I know you like to do your uh, reading of the headlines. So this is the last, possibly the last one you're going to do. So, girls. Thank God. Give it your okay. all. Give it your best shot. So much pressure. And here we go in three, two, one. And now, all the news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not. Here's AG Today's lead anchor, Bethany Yingling, with current events and sidewalk conditions. <laughs> Land preservation continues. Hanover shoe forms, shoe farms, preserving more land. New I walking stopped. trail ready for visitors in Gettysburg at the Daniel Lady Farm. Gettysburg zoning makes the news again. All this and more on today's news. What happened? I suck. <laughs> Bullshit. Okay. Um, phone scammers are impersonating law enforcement and threatening immediate arrest. Uh, Gettysburg Borough <laughs> Police were warning residents of phone scammers who impersonate members of law enforcement and threatening legal action and immediate arrest. Um, they're they're basically saying they're from the Adams County Sheriff's Department mm. and telling them that they miss something like jury duty or there's a warrant out for yeah. their arrest or yeah. something like that. I, I had uh, one of those calls and they were calling from the sheriff's department saying that I owed back taxes and I owe the IRS and the sheriff's going to come and get me unless I come as unless I unless I pay three thousand dollars on the phone. Mm-hmm. And I said, um, why isn't the IRS coming to get me? <laughs> and they're like, sir, this is not uh, a joking matter. It's very <laughs> serious. Um, you know, they're going to come and get you unless you pay this now. And they're like naming all these different agencies. And I'm like, you know, that's not how the system works, right? Like there's a process to that. Like I know how it works. Sir, we need your social security number. <laughs> I'm like, no, Put the gun down. why are you yelling at me? Well, they hope to get you poor flustered. customer service, you know, like flustered to give the information. <clears throat> yeah, and they're preying on old people that are not aware. Well, of this has me like... This particular article because they called uncle. Oh, your uncle. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I thought you meant like they gave up. No, no. No. Like they. (laughs) (laughs) Wait. Did they actually call your uncle? Yeah. yeah, Her uncle. No, they called my uncle Steve. Mm -hmm. Wait, why did you say it like that? Because she calls him uncle. (laughs) <laughs> so I thought she was saying they gave up too. <laughs> I just cried, Uncle, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the scammers called me and I was so annoying they cried, Uncle. 
<laughs> they called uncle. They couldn't handle it. I forget it. that people don't know who I'm talking about. My uncle, Steve. Who but I, you want my social security number? I'm not going to give you that because I know, you know, you shouldn't really be doing this. Uncle, I give up. I give up. <laughs> no, okay, but it's really not good to be calling people like this. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. The Indian, the Indian accent must have been a dead giveaway. Yeah. <laughs> but no, like Uncle Steve called me like freaking out, Oh, you know, like upset and all this stuff. And yeah. why didn't you pay my taxes and all this? Oh. Stuff. And I'm like, what happened? Does he so, work? No, he doesn't even need right. to pay taxes. So how's he paying tax? Yeah, right. <laughs> so, oh, but he didn't but, know. Yeah. Yeah. So, but like. If and and I said, did you say anything? No, I don't know for sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What he said. Yeah. What he, he said, actually right, sure. said. Yeah. 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 So like he could have given his social. I mean, I don't know. So I worry about that because, you know, people like Uncle Steve who have a cognitive disability, like they're not, they don't understand sometimes that this is a scam, mm-hmm. and that's who they're actually going after is people like that. Now, I'm sorry to say like people like uncle steve are are going to (laughs) you know be the victims of a lot of that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. i i have to constantly remind him if you don't recognize the number don't pick up right don't pick up if it isn't myself or dad or mallory don't pick up (laughs) they're calling uh the elderly up up in boston saying we have your grandson under arrest you need to send us money for bail and it's been a very successful scam. Well, you know, that happened to my uh, my my mother's cousin. Uh, and she got a call saying, um, we have your husband and son. And if you don't pay whatever, we're going to kill them. <gasps> oh, how and, terrible. Yeah. And now he's, he's laughing. laughing. <laughs> like, come on. Like, what the hell is this? And, and Taken? <laughs> like, you're not going to kill anybody, dude. And, and, Have you uh, seen my bank account, sir? Have you done a credit check? Yeah, exactly. I can't pay you. Right. You're kidnapping the wrong person. <laughs> first, She's like, first of all, take the ex-husband, uh, but my son I want back. So she starts freaking out, right? Yeah. And she's calling the, her other son. And she's like, where's your brother? Where's your brother? Somebody's got your brother. No, no, no. She's like, somebody's got your brother and, it's, and your father. And he's going to kill them. And unless we pay $50,000 and blah, 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 blah. And he, she's like, mom, he's right here. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what? What do you mean? Somebody just called me. So they called the cops. And then it was like a scam that people were doing. Right. Yeah. But that scares it. Oh, because that was the other thing. The scammers like had somebody offline. It was just like. You know, and oh, no. yeah, not offline. Don't off, redeem offline. the gift card. Don't <laughs> redeem. It. Uh, you're not a. You guys are murderers. Oh god! Don't, whatever you do, mom, don't redeem the gift card. <laughs> Well, that's, that's why a lot of these places are now recommending that you have a code word. You know, like Yankee yeah. Doodle. Right. What's the code word? Yeah. Yankee Doodle. Okay, you really do have my son. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like with Ezra. Right. Can you imagine like, you got right, kidnapped like and your your code word is Yankee Doodle? <laughs> you're like beaten up, there's blood streaming down, you can't see, it's blinding you, you're tied up into a chair. Just tell you're my gonna, mom Yankee Doodle. Tell my mom Yankee Doodle. <laughs> She'll know. <laughs> She'll know what that means. Uh, no, but like for kids, like especially like if you're going to pick up a kid yeah. and they don't, you know, it's not a normal pickup person that only uh, don't get in the car with somebody who isn't your parents or knows this word to say to you. Um, so like <laughs> that's real CIA shit to my kid. Hey, listen, in case I'm not there, you make sure that a random guy in the minivan says Yankee Doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I so mean, that is an extreme example. <laughs> well, there, there may be a day I'm, that I don't pick you up. I'm going to push you off that chair. <laughs> <laughs> I think the news is going comes, down. Waldo's down. And Company announces a scholarship program. Isn't yeah. that great? Yeah. So those who aren't familiar with Waldo's and Company, as I was not... They are dedicated to enriching the Gettysburg community. Waldo's provides a framework where artists, musicians, and creatives can 
cultivate, practice, and showcase their work. The organization offers low-cost studios, community arts resources, classrooms. Low and, cost, that's great. And art. Oh, hello, Grant. Oh, I, I, I was going to take it after you finished this article. I was going to say Larry from Botswana is calling in to talk about the beavers. Larry from Botswana after this article. Um, an art gallery, a music venue, and a donation-only coffee and soda bar. So they have, um, they are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. They are proud to announce that they la- the launch of a new scholarship program made possible by the generous support of Sharon True Klein McGraw Foundation, the Adams County Community Foundation's Helen Shields Hafer Memorial Fund, who Waldo's dedicated, and Waldo's dedicated donors. <laughs> what are you? Oh, dear. <laughs> So, additionally, Waldos is excited to collaborate with Wellspan's Healthy Adams County Initiative, emphasizing the importance of arts access as a key component of community well-being and engagement. The scholarship program will provide low-income and underrepresented, (coughs) no, underrepresented residents of Adams County with free access to Waldos art facilities, including painting, ceramics, printmaking, and photography trade shops. So that's very cool. Well, that they is do. cool. Mm-hmm. Waldo's so, good for job. more information on applying for a scholarship or supporting Waldo's mission, contact them at info at waldosandco.com or visit their website, waldosandco.com. Uh, Jesus, do I want to do, do you this? Wax? Do you wax? I do. Okay. I do. That was read very well. She does. She waxes me. Oh. And- <laughs> at least one of you two can read. Hey, Larry from Botswana, you're on the air. <laughs> Thank, thank you, kind sir. <laughs> You're welcome. How's the weather down there in Botswana? Oh, it's fine and dandy, old man. Fine and dandy. Yeah. Are you uh, what heading into spring in Botswana? Or are you in spring heading into uh, summer? No. Indeed, indeed. Good for you. That is great. And and you're going to come and visit up here, ladies. Oh, lest anybody be fooled, this is Grant from Australia, not Larry from oh, Botswana. I know. Oh my! He no he's clue. a master of vocal disguise. <laughs> In the queue here, it's uh, it also said that he was Eugene, who wanted to talk about the Beaver. <clears throat> and uh, so, what do you want to talk about the be- whether you're Larry, Grant, or Eugene? What do you want to say about Beaver? Ah. <laughs> uh, uh. Everyone enjoys a good beaver. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. This is it's the most so inappropriate. No, but seriously. <laughs> you got to uh, put like a censorship it, on a censor. Yeah. Little like a explicit explicit on this one. Anyway, Larry, go ahead. Cindy, do you have a problem with the beaver? <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> she no, was, uh, her, I, was just, I was just wondering, Matt. Her look. Yes, Grant, go ahead. Please. We have to go to dinner. <laughs> Grant, yes. Okay. I was wondering, Andy was saying that, uh, you know, he was, the first time he was on the show and everything, I was I was wondering, do you remember when I first called in? I do. I do. I thought you were uh, from San Francisco and you were hitting on me. Oh, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I, was, I really, I really don't, Grant. Show. It was Veronica's last show? Yeah, because the, the situation was that I felt sorry for Veronica because you seemed to just want to get rid of her. I oh. remember that. Show. What? I remember that call. I don't and remember I, this call. Wait, hold on a sec. And you Cindy. didn't have anything prepared or anything, so I thought I'd call in and, and, you don't remember and, this? and be nice. No, I don't remember this at all. <laughs> Explain it again as well, if I'm a five-year-old. It's normal. Uh, you say you say I don't have any, I didn't have anything re- prepared for her, but uh, I believe I did. And it goes like this. And it's all you good old boys at the railroad cut, like having a grand old time. And I'm standing there like, yeah. you knew oh, that's right, of course. You were supposed you to go to the there, Grant. even if you weren't going to the cemetery. You never even thought to say, hey, plans changed. The group is. Going. How do I <laughs> say goodbye? <laughs> to what? And I believe the good Grant's comment was, wow, listen to all the processing on Matt's voice. Outweigh the bad. 
Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we'd get to see forever. That's interesting. But forever's <laughs> gone away. Hey, now Whoa. wait a minute. Why was it's so hard to say goodbye <laughs> to yesterday. I had to do the whole thing to the conclusion because it drives me nuts when I don't resolve a melody. Uh, so go ahead, Grant. What else you got? Yeah. But um, but no. But seriously, I, seriously, I agree with you. I agree with you, Matt. It's much better with Beth now. Oh, you are such an a. I never say. You know what? And the thing is, Ronnie's going to believe you. So don't do that, Grantly. No, I, I love I love Ronnie, but Beth is just. The best there ever was. There ever was. Better than your Greek girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> well, she, she certainly drinks a lot more. <laughs> but she, but she had four, had sips, four of beer. sips of beer last week. <laughs> four sips of beer. Should I make her try the uh, uh, the oh big uh, Johnson oh, that Estate would here? Knock you on your butt. Mm hmm. Old Oak Ruby. Uh, but on a serious note. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I have to give you everyone the bad news, and I thought I would call in because no, no, Grant, because I, I can't make it this year. Oh, come on, Grant! Oh. What's your? St All right, what, what did something bad happen before I say it's a stupid thing? Uh, yes, in this case, all, um, my father, who's had cancer problems my almost my entire life, he's fought, fought it on and off has uh, come back with it, and it's pretty serious. Oh. So I wanna, I'm wanting to spend as much time as I can I understand with that, Grant. I know I know we're very important in your life, but your dad is more important, and I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, that, that's that awful. And this that, better not be one of your stupid jokes. only goal this year. This better not be one of your stupid my jokes. My only goal this year was to come to Gettysburg. I wanted to meet everyone, and it's that's really disappointing. Well, I'm sure it is, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. It, this isn't a joke, right, Grant? Like, this isn't you're going to say, and uh, no, oh, by the no way, and then you hang up. Um, okay, good. Because that would be a horrible thing to joke about. No, yeah. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm coming in in uh, March or April for sure <sighs> to blow that town wide open. <laughs> <laughs> Grant, so I look up the beaters. Grant's coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really disappointed because I was I'm very much looking forward to meeting you and I, I guess I wonder if I should uh, if I should announce this now then I was going to do it when Grant was here but or maybe I should wait until the till the end okay yeah uh, I'll 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 do what I'll, you gotta do, I'll do what I have to do, but you'll you'll know something very very exciting for you that only a very few people in the world are are honored enough to say. Um, but, uh, well, and it's I, not touching Matt's chest. No, you don't know. This is <laughs> off limits. That's, that's only for me and Cindy. That's, oh. I don't know where you got in the mix there, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess after a couple of drinks, we'll do anything, won't we? <laughs> no, but, uh, I'm really, Grant, I, I truly am sorry to hear that about your dad. Yeah. And I have to tell you, Thank uh, you. Thank you. Th this has been a, an awful year. Awful. Mm-hmm. It has. It has been for you and as, yeah. as we all know. Yeah. And, and now for, you know, I hate that that's happening to you as well. Um, what are you going to do? What does your dad like to do? Are you going to like just go do whatever he likes to do? Are you just going to hang out at the house or, or what are you doing? Just whatever he wants to do, yeah. uh, you know, as much as he can do at this point. So. Well, Grant, I'm sure I don't even need to look at the comments. I'm sure you have the sympathy of uh, all of our listeners here because uh, everybody loves you. And uh, and can I just say to everyone? Here it is. Here's the punchline. No, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. I again, I'm, I really wanted to meet everyone, um, and uh, it's yeah, I just hate not being able to do it this year, but. I promise, absolute promise, I will be there next year. There's no if, if so buts about it this time. Listen, if I have to paddle my surfboard all the way down to Melbourne, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to drag you up here, okay? Well, well, with that body, I wouldn't doubt you'd be able to. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I know. I know. You're absolutely right. It would only be slightly less sunburnt than what I feel that one chest is <laughs> right there. No, my back will be burnt really bad, though, from all the paddling. Well, I think you would my do some backstroke eventually. No, on a surfboard? Oh, right. You yeah. mentioned the surfboard. How do you think I got these shoulders? All right, listen, uh, Grant, seriously, <laughs> my, my, my sympathies, and um, I hope you, you know, have a very fulfilled time with your dad. Um, and I hope, uh, mm -hmm. I hope it uh, doesn't hurt you too much. I mean, I know it's gonna, of course it's an awful thing, but stay strong. Wow. You've friend. actually got human emotions. This is nice. <laughs> I do grant. In fact, this morning, um, I woke up and I was crying. Um, I stubbed my toe, <laughs> but I felt the, the, the frustration of that pain and, um, the waterworks came on. Mm -hmm. I, can't. I get it. No, but really, I do. I do. I lost a friend to, to cancer back in May, and um, uh, more recently too. And it's an awful thing to see. And um, so, I you have my sympathies. <clears throat> and we'll see you in March or April. We will. We will give you big hugs. Well, I will. Give Bethany, you big hugs. I hope you go. <laughs> Bethany, yes. Please, Bethany, go to rehab so you're safe by the time I come. I will make sure that I'm alcohol free by the time you get here. Yeah, and maybe you can go to sensitivity no, training. I, I'm, uh, no, I'm, I'm into about the prejudice against the group. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's I'll the, do what I can. That's what I'm talking about. Andy, Bethany hates Greeks. That is not at all. <laughs> true. Do, you, do you know how they separate the men from the boys in Greece? <laughs> God. With wait, a, wait, wait, wait. Hold it. Hold it. Go. How do they do it? With a. <laughs> we are never holy shizer oh my god that's i've never heard that one <laughs> and grant's girlfriend is greek and bethany hates her i do um, not oh I'll leave you to your the end of the show and go. You guys go to dinner. But Thank thanks you. very much, Matt. I love the show and everyone there. And um, I'll see you guys soon. Okay, hey, Grant. Mm -hmm. Grant see you listen, later, honey. listen, little buddy. I love you, and I love <laughs> that you love the show. And I thank you for it. And I I truly do enjoy your comments and your ribbing me. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it I love actually, the show in spite of you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Grant. Grant, you are a very funny person. Thank you so much. Uh, get the uh, fuck off my phone. Oh, shit, I hit the wrong button. No! You've been missing those Oh, no, I hit the wrong button. Well, it's the end of the show. Nobody listens anyway. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh my Grant, there. Now, let's get back to the news with the girls, okay? Just to refresh ourselves. the news girls. All right. So the Gettysburg Planning Commission, Cindy had uh, filled us in last time about the um, p problems with the honeybees and the chickens. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so we have we have added to that. It's a lot different than Boston so, News, by the way. Said that the proposed <laughs> change to the zoning uh, commission report is that they will, there's a change to allow honeybees and chickens in some areas through that the borough has been removed following public comment, as Cindy said last week. And there's also an area creating um, the idea of creating areas around the railroad tracks, you know, down near the, the, yeah. the train station where the old um, tracks are. No, the, the uh, yeah. farmer's market, that open spot there um, creating Industrial development is also off the table. So they've really kind of closed some of this in a little bit um, based off of public comment. So if if uh, what I guess I'm saying is if we continue to pay attention and we continue to talk about it, they are making changes based off of public comment. So that's good to see. Good. It doesn't that's, always happen. That's very rare. Um, so that's very nice. Um, mm -hmm. so, so they're, they're listening to the public yes. and public outcry about, uh, animals. Yeah. 
This was interesting, though. Uh, the, the current land value of the undeveloped and vacant Gettysburg Station property, which I assume is where the farmer's market was, was about uh, $500,000 per acre. Right. While nearby properties, including the Lincoln Diner and the Transit Station, were valued between $800,000 and $1 million, and $1 million. per acre. Per undeveloped acre? Per just per acre. Per acre. Per acre. Where? In the town? Lincoln but Diner. that's the Lincoln Diner and the Transit Station were valued between $800,000 and $1 million. Mm, cannot that's wait insane. for the bubble to burst. Um, said that um, the underutilization of properties can negatively impact property values while acknowledging we should have a better understanding of the cost of community services for these developments during the planning stages. Mm. They're saying that increased traffic was a concern with the new development and you know, how they were going <clears> to <throat> build that high rise there. But at the overall impact, this was weird, too, that the overall impact might be reduced because residents might drive their cars at different times than commercial traffic. I mean, okay. (laughs) How do they figure this shit out? But I mean, I guess they're saying that not everybody's going to drive at the same time. So, yeah, but I guess it's really okay. Yeah, I guess they're saying that, like, you go to work. That's the traffic study right there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. enough. Everyone might drive at a different time. So it's all good. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you're just going to drive. We don't care. <laughs> now there was a, yeah. as part of this, there was a regulation put into there about the occupancy number in single family homes, mm-hmm. which the, the Gettysburg <laughs> newspaper article, uh, said that it basically is, um, Burroughs rezoning could redefine the definition of a family. Oh boy. Yeah. Here we go. Um, was the number of unrelated people permitted to live as a oh. family in one dwelling as defined by the ordinance? Wait, unrelated people to live together as a family. Mm-hmm. We're not allowed to choose who we call our family anymore. Apparently. What does that mean? No, oh, that you're number just limited to a number. Huh? You're just limited to a number. A number of people you can choose yes. to be in your family. Yes, you have to shrink mm, that That's down. not very woke. That number has been a major concern for residents commenting on the comprehensive rewrite of Gettysburg's current zoning rules <laughs> undertaken by Borough Council's appointment of the Zoning Ordinance Task Force. Um, the definition of a family in the borough's current zoning calls it a household of one or more persons related by genetics, <clears throat> adoption, or marriage, or a group of four or fewer persons who are not related by genetics, adoption, or marriage. So that's the ori- original? That's what the original ones. The definition is unchanged in the latest draft of the rewritten ordinance, and many members of the public have suggested that it be reduced. From four? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can't choose three other people to live with? And you consider- can't have three roommates. Do you that's see, do you see why, I wanna, why I want to move out of town? Wow. <laughs> There's no rules out there. Yeah, so well, literally, there's no rules. The septic tank hasn't worked for yeah. years at the and house and we're that's buying. Cool. <laughs> it's fine. They don't need to check it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Right. So it definitely changes. You know, people are really looking at it, which is, I guess, in the grand scheme of life, a good thing. We're really be- paying more attention to our local politics. You know, and, to the, oh, yeah, the yeah. older yeah. ordinances that maybe need to be updated to newer times. We're sure. now paying attention to those. Well, is this the, nice. is this the ordinance that used to say that like n- no more than like two women could live together, otherwise it's a brothel? Remember that <laughs> ordinance? No, there there really was. I don't know, hon. Like that's why. Uh, so this is. I don't know if this is true, but this is the long standing, let's say, rumor that I've uh-huh. heard. That the reason there are no sorority houses is because of this ordinance and it would exceed the number and therefore make it a brothel. Mm. It's an old, it's like an archaic, I don't know if it's true, yeah. but I know that I've met it, I've met, I've met it, I've met many You've been local, to many brothels <laughs> and you know it. I've been to all the brothels in town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I met many locals throughout the years I've lived here and- all unrelated to each other in some, yeah. well, they're all related in some way, but they're, you know, unrelated as far as this story goes. And they all say the same thing. So I wonder if I this has something to do with kind of updating that. Cause that's kind of a little backwards, you know, Yeah. to think. I mean, the way. only thing it says in the current ordinance is four or more people. Mm-hmm. So if there's some, sorry, well, 1-800 brothel, huh? <laughs> calling my, my friend is a madam. I'm going to see what the ordinance is. No, I have to uh, I have to ask Bo a question. I'm sorry. It's for a listener. We are never 
Hey, this is Bo. Oh. Thanks for calling. Oh, I hate uh, you, dude. I'll try to get back as soon as I can. They're going to meet us for dinner later. Hey, Bo, um, I have a listener who wants to know, and just text me with the answer because we're still doing the show. What is the latest on uh, a Gettysburg Christmas? When is it going to, is it going to be able to be seen here again? Is it ever going to be streaming or on TV? People are dying to see my name at the end credits misspelled. All right. So give me a call or no, don't give me a call. Just text me the answer and I'll see you at dinner. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. All right, so was that? Mm -hmm. Okay. New walking trail ready for visitors in Gettysburg at the Daniel Lady Farm. The walking tour is self-guided, includes 14 stops, traverses just shy of a quarter of a mile. <laughs> The historical farm of the historical farm and can be completed in 30 minutes. Um, it is open this weekend for guests to explore Gettysburg's historic Daniel Lady Farm. Throughout the year, the facility manager, Chris Jones, and museum curator, Lauren Wilmoth, have worked to compile facts and sift through fictitious information to create an authentic yet fascinating walking tour that takes visitors from the first founding of the historic property to the aftermath of the battle and beyond. Each marker explains the significance of various locations on the farm. Um, I want to know what the fictitious things are. I know. So the trail opens to the public on Saturday, September 21st. Brochures will be available outside the front office near the main entrance of the farm. The, it will contain a map as well as more information about each marker. Entry is free. Um, and that's it. Visitor hours are dusk. No, it's not dusk to dawn. It's dawn to dusk. Uh, and parking is available in the grass to the left of the main entrance. And that's at the Daniel Lady Farm. Hey, Andy, what's uh, Boston news like? Give me an example of a Boston news story. Uh-oh. I bet it's going to be like this. SUV splashes into McSherry's Town's quarry after police chase. <laughs> Two Pretty people much. rescued by officers. Pretty much, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, well, we have that. Yeah. <laughs> 700 hypodermic syringes have been pulled from the sidewalk. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. We don't have that yet here, but give it time. I did see that they did a study recently that they feel like um, deaths from drug overdose are down by a significant. Here? I, no, I, I believe that. I believe that. You do? Yeah. Oh, is it people are more aware of fentanyl being in everything? I don't and... know. I, I swear to God. I, I feel like I haven't been to an, o, an OD in my You're a cop. For in a year. People don't know you're a cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I haven't been to an overdose in like a year. I don't know why. Hmm. Yeah, I do. I have had the same Narcan in my pocket I haven't used. Yeah, well, people have news. naloxone or, or Narcan yeah. and they're using it. I so, believe that. I believe. I actually believe that because I remember. Oh, well, that's true. They from, do have all those places where they give them away for free now, right? Mm -hmm. The Narcan? Um, yeah, yeah. So, but either way, they even when they were doing that like from 20, I remember like 2018 to 2015 to 2018 was like insane, hmm. you know? Yeah, that was when my cousin died in 2017. Yeah, and um, I feel like it hasn't been that bad. So, <clears throat> Well, good, good, because it's an awful thing. Mm -hmm. All right, girls, uh, lightning speed, go. <laughs> a police pursuit so ended fast. with yeah. an officer rescuing a 19-year-old Fayetteville man and his pregnant 17-year-old nice. girlfriend oh, come on. out of their vehicle after it landed mm -hmm. inside the waters of the quarry in McSherry's town. This Basta! was on Sunday morning. Um, according to the release by the McSherry's Town Borough Police Department, officers were pursuing a vehicle for multiple traffic violations when the vehicle ended up around 90 feet into a water-filled quarry behind Ridge Avenue. Yeah, I remember I was telling you about yeah, this. Yeah, I do. And they posted yeah. some pictures. You can look that up on the mm -hmm. the news article of them actually pulling it out. Uh, He's one of it dad. submerged. <laughs> and then, yeah. yeah. Dude, Neither they're freaking are... lucky that thing was water-filled. Yeah, Imagine right. If they yeah. drove into it, no water. Oh, that yeah. That would have been awful. Neither occupant Smash. nor the officer who entered the water was injured in the incident. Um, the rescue divers from the Hanover area volunteer fire and rescue scuba team, which I didn't know we had, um, responded to the scene and assisted the tow company with removing the submerged vehicle from the quarry. Some of those quarries go deep, even though there's yeah. water in them. I mean, they're deep. Yeah. They're lucky. It It's... Yeah, they're very lucky. Yeah, it's stupid. People have gone missing in quarries that you mm -hmm. don't think are deep. Like 20 years later, they're draining the quarry and there's someone's car with a person in it. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're very, can be tricky like that, especially if there's a lot of rain. 
Yeah. <clears throat> summary charges include reckless driving, damaging property with a motor vehicle, failure to stop at a stop sign, driving an unregistered vehicle, and driving a vehicle without a valid inspection. No, endangering the They're life of a minor or anything like no, that? No, nothing like that. Well, well, unborn. It, it says, no, though, she's 17. No, so, but it says, uh, though, that... Um, Records, court records show that they have charged him with a felony count of fleeing or eluding police, as well as a misdemeanor count of reckless endangerment and DUI. Oh, okay. Okay. God. So he's got a mess. I mean, we were all stupid when we were young. Well, that, were we that that's stupid? stupid. Mm -mm. No, we weren't, right? No, knocking up a girl at seven, <laughs> maybe 16, and now she's 17 and you're going Speeding around like an with ass. a baby in her. Yeah. Like, Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't, uh, Events. Yeah, um, I have one more. Um, we okay. were talking the other day about the Hanover Shoe Farm. Yes. Um, they are preserving more land. The main farm for a local horse breeding operation recently gained ar agricultural, I always mess that up, agricultural, agricultural preservation status. All right. Um, they, the Adams County Commissioners approved an nice agreement touch, of buddy. sale and purchase of an agricultural conservation easement of 274.62 acres uh, with the Hanover Shoe Farms in Conewago and uh, Union Townships. The county is covering, this is for you, Matt, because you always talk about this kind of stuff. They're covering the $823,860 purchase, as well as the $15,954 that is eligible for reimbursement by the state board. That's I'm always insane. talking about that? Well, about the price of property. Oh, yeah. And about how, you know... Well, I mean, some is worth it, but like others, some of the things we've been looking at, I'm like, how are you coming up with this number? The entire project encompasses some of the best farmland in Adams. Yeah. County. So that that's different, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So, what else you got? So the Hanover Shoe Farm still doing good even today. Wonderful. Even today. We have events. So uh, it is Mason Dixon Cheeseburger Weekend. This weekend only. $2 <laughs> off our burger of the month, which is shown. Look at that. Delicious looking. That oh. does look good. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Mm. Delicious. MDD right? cheeseburger. What's MDD mean? Mason Dixon Mason Distillery. Dixon. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. $2 off our bacon hopping. cheeseburger, cheeseburger soup special, cheeseburger fries special, order a burger, and any flight... Get two free sample pours of any of our canned cocktails. So um, head over to that, to Mason Dixon. It's this weekend, so make sure you go this weekend. This weekend is World War II weekend at the Eisenhower National Historic Site. Okay. Um, there will be book signings at the today, Visitor Center. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow evening, uh, so take advantage of that. That's free and open to the public, as well as um, the you can drive out to the historic site um, to the living history camp. I can't handle these two right now. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> um, just make sure it's after the get out of the car tour. Yeah, yes. uh, the Ooh. actual. Camp will be open to the public from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday. The uh, I will be there the I whole mean. time, both days, uh, running the Children of Gettysburg 1944 tent. Oh, that's right. Very cool. Uh, where we will be having kids purchase. They will give, Each kid will be given $2, and we have modern... Any uh, object that would have, or uh, good that would have been sent over to soldiers. Okay. Yep. Um, that we'll is be still, scratching words into each other. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> that is still around today. We went out and bought. So like tea, the, the Twillings tea and Spam. And ah, all, delicious. And all that kind of stuff. And they had Spam have the, in the Civil War? The prices from that <laughs> time. World War II. Oh, World War II, sorry. Yeah, and we have so the, the prices price. from that they're, time. Uh, they're that price and mm -hmm. they can use they the $2 buy to buy as much as they That's want. That's so cool. And then, that is nice. And then they can then fill the crate. Was this and, your idea too? No, this was between Aaron and I. Very nice. And then they can take the crate over. We made an agreement with one of the living history groups. So they'll accept the crate <gasps> and then eat it. Um, act like they're going to send it over. The oh. other thing is they can write letters to Bob's friends who are still overseas. Oh, okay. Uh, as a... Very know. nice. This just in right off the wires for Barbara. 
Uh, uh, Bo, Bo says we are in talks with the Majestic. So nothing yet, but that's what they're trying to do. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Real quick, you, you mentioned the Get Out of the Car Tour while mm-hmm. we're talking about it. Mm-hmm. Very important, ladies and gentlemen. You go look at the website. Everything has changed. Also, if you look at Facebook at the events, this language has changed as well. Parking is along West Confederate Avenue in the area of North Carolina. And the Tennessee Monuments, it's limited. Uh, so uh, you can't park like by the 11th Mississippi Right across where the you know the buses park and they walk people across to the North Carolina Monument. Don't park in that area because that's a heavily visited area, and uh, we don't want to get in the way of regular visitors. Apparently, you're not a regular visitor. You're if a you, special visitor. You're special. We get special permits because mm-hmm. we're special yep. and we are unique. And so, what you have to do is either park before it, so that would be north of that area. So, like, uh, there's parking spaces all along the way there. I would just park as soon as you can, you know, and then work your way down. Uh, or you could park after, like, around the, maybe the Virginia Memorial. Don't make up a parking spot if the, if it says don't park. Uh, but there's really no no parking signs in that area. Uh, but make sure whatever you do that your uh, feet, or not your feet, your wheels <laughs> are all four on the pavement. You have to do that. But let me read you the park's words so that you have it uh, specifically. Participants are required to park either north or south of these monuments to allow parking spaces at the monuments for regular visitors and tour buses that stop at these areas for a short period of time and then move on. Park on the right-hand side of the roadway with all four feet on the pavement. All four wheels. Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead. Anything else? We got we to gotta eat in, in one minute. Oh, dear. <laughs> I do want to say that the national park, the guys and gals working on the World War II weekend has been absolutely amazing. And one of the things they gave everybody on the team, myself included, which was very sweet, they didn't have to do that, was a dog tag that they made. Oh, that's neat. Of a soldier who was in the National Cemetery who was killed in Very nice touch. So my guy was William Copeland, who was killed on June 6, 1944. Oh. So I guess we'll just, uh, the last one that I'll say here since... We have to go faster. Uh, this Sunday, September 22nd, from 2 to 5, yeah. the um, licensed battlefield guides are doing their Sunday afternoon program again. It's Major General <clears throat> Richard Anderson's division. It's at the Gettysburg National Military Park Amphitheater at 909 West Confederate Ave. You do need to get tickets. They're $35 per person. You can purchase them on their website, gettysburgtourguides.org. Um, gettysburgtourguides.org. So head over there. Get those. It is this Sunday. All right. And then one one more reminder about a Gettysburg Christmas. They're in talks with the Majestic, but no confirmation yet. They will make the announcement when it is uh, actually happening. So there you go. All right. That's it. Andy, thank you very, very much for coming out. Yeah, that was great. Everybody in the back, thank you for all the gifts. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful picture of Major. Thank you for everything, really. Uh, uh, Grant, um, uh, our our sympathies, buddy. Um, I feel really bad for you, but uh, make the best of this time. And oh, look, my camera's not she's on giving me. you a heart, okay? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. That was really touching. <laughs> all right, so thank you all for, for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, <laughs> I'm well, going to push you yeah. down the stairs. Yeah, well, I might fall on my own because I am hungry. We'll talk to you guys <laughs> next week. See you at the tour. Bye. AG Today's opening theme is written and performed by Colin Southfield and the Mushroom Country Band. Bumper music is arranged and performed by Billy Webster and sometimes <laughs> Kevin McLeod. AG Today is produced by Matt Cowley, Bethany Yingling, Debbie Jones, and Cindy Compton. <laughs> Engineered by Colby Sumner and maybe sometimes someone else. Guest accommodations are provided by the guests themselves. We'll need a couple thousand patrons to be able to put people up in hotels. Speaking of patrons, maybe you'd like to become one. You'll find plenty of perks over there, not to mention hundreds of episodes that will help you further your Gettysburg and Civil War education. So go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. I'm Huevos Grande, the voice of addressing Gettysburg. Thanks for listening. Thank you for Broadcast Day. Oh,